100,000 on a beat. day to be a tiger. JSU by 40 campaign. Coach Taylor, I was just thinking, I was sitting in my office and we were talking about Jackson State Athletics, the tradition of Jackson State. You played here. What if 50,000 alums gave $40 a month for 12 months? Man, that would be huge. That's money in the bank for hey, athletic well, program. Let's do this, Coach. I'm challenging all 50,000 alumni of Jackson State University, supporters, fans, Let's get $40 a month to the JSU by 40 campaign. 12 months, 12 million, September to August. Let's win championships in the classroom. Let's support Jackson State University. Let's support athletics. And let's make sure our coaches and our student athletes are successful. So again, Coach Taylor and I are challenging you, all 50,000 alums, $40 a month for 12 months to support Jackson State athletics. Go Tiger. Go Tiger. Support the JSU by 40 campaign. Visit GoJSUTigers.com forward slash JSU by 40. What's going on, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? Happy Hump Day Wednesday. Uh, hopefully the team will be on in just a second. Got a special guest today, as always. We're going to keep that special guest Wednesday going on. March Madness has officially began. And our Lady Tigers uh, went out there and handled business today, man. It was a tough one. It was, it was a hard-fought battle against old Prairie View, but we did what we needed to do to get what we needed to get done, and that is to win. Uh, our coach Tamika Reed said, "What? What she say? It's uh, it's March, and the only when, only thing that matters is March, man. March is March Madness, baby. Uh, I'm working on uh, finishing up uh, a couple of these slides, man. We'll I actually got them up right now, and." Uh, we're excited to have uh, the general manager on today, man, the GM of the football program. Uh, Coach Otis Ridley will be on. Give me just a second, y'all. Let me let me add something. Uh, and, man, we've been working, man. Been really working, trying to continue to build this brand. All I can say is, is man, we got some very exciting uh, things coming down the pipe with uh, KC1400 Media, man. Y'all stay tuned and uh, stay locked in with us. Uh, stay uh, – <laughs> <laughs> Stay locked in with us, man. We got some big time things coming down the pipe, and uh, compliments of the, of the squad, man. We we really been doing a lot of work trying to really uh, brand ourselves and really get this thing rocking and rolling. And uh, G Dizzle, what's up, man? Life. <laughs> yeah, you got to get like you took a L today. Bro. <laughs> Nah, man. It, hey, it's pretty cool, man. I try not to let myself get too stressful about anything, and if I do, I push on. Yeah, man. Uh, How you making? Tiger Nation, what's good? Man, I'm good, man. It's been a uh, 
It's been a long, long day, bro. A long day. Productive, though, I got to say. Uh, I was just sharing with the family, and I, I'll get with you on it. Uh, got to give a huge shout out to uh, Big Brother KT. I'm going to go ahead and shout him out right now. Um, yeah, already they all in the chat already, man. He, uh, he, I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, man, he all, you know, he j just like yourself, man. He always working, looking to try to figure out a way to take this thing that we're doing to the next level, man. And uh, he did that. Uh, we we had a a great call today uh, with someone that he he actually brought to us. Um, had a brief conversation uh, with him and uh, just. Fantastic opportunity for us to continue to brand this thing and take this uh, KC 1400 media thing a lot more serious and take it to the next level, man. I'm telling y'all, man, y'all stay tuned, but we got some major things coming down the pipe. I got to say that. But uh, we just entered a new partnership uh, with the group out of Mississippi. Um, and I, I don't know if you guys, I, I'll introduce them while we got our preliminaries going on. We got about, what kind of time we got? We got about eight minutes. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I ain't talked to Zoe today. Uh, so hopefully he'll be on. If not, we'll be we'll be we'll be rocking and rolling uh, uh, with Coach. Uh, somebody said Coach Beef. What Coach Beef at? What Coach Beef? Coach Beef in the thing? Let me look at the chat. See who in this thing, man. What's up, guy? Hey, there you go. What up, Coach Beef? What's up, man? Beef. What's going on, Doc? But uh, let's go ahead and jump into this, this real quick, man. Um, uh, TDY, we on it, and and some of this, I, like I said, this. Man, I, I, I'm excited, but I'm also anxious because I don't, you know, you know how you, you just got to look to God, man. Let him lead you, bro. You know what I mean? And just uh, lean on him and let him do what he do. I will say this. Let's go ahead and add this. I made a few changes um, to the foundation. Uh, we we are on Givelify. I do want to say that. We're friends of KC14 Inc. Uh, we provide strategic resources and financial support to the Jack State University community through collaborative initiatives to stabilize and enhance the viability of students. And, and that, what that means is we simply can, uh, we as a collective unit, all our supporters, bro, is uh, really come together to do some fantastic things in our community. And uh, we want to definitely um, make sure we streamline that. We are not tied to the university. We not we do not represent Jack State officially, but we are represent Jack State. We rep we rep the I love. But uh, TD, I do want to go ahead and, and and take time now and go ahead and. Put this up here, man. I want to make this quick, brief announcement, man. That we uh, we have a new partner, man. New sponsor, new partner, new new uh. We want to uh, shout out the Hattiesburg Management Group, man, uh, for partnering with KC fourteen hundred Media. And I'm telling you guys, man, um, the sky is the absolute limit uh, for where we're about to take this thing. And I'm talking about not only just YouTube, man. We're trying to get on TV, TD. So I hope you're ready, man. You got to buckle up, big dog. We're going to have some, uh, we got some big time things coming down the pipe where we really are going to really lean into this thing and really get some serious uh, sponsors behind what we're doing. Uh, we're trying to grow this collective. We're trying to uh, really change the game, man. One athlete at a time. We got a new website coming down the pipe. Um, still got that website, but we're going to actually rebrand um, and actually roll out a new website that's going to be a little bit more interactive to the uh we'll have we're gonna we're also gonna be looking to uh grow our our our, our kc 1400 it's not kc 1400 it's not it's not it's not 1400 club i just want to say that Haley, Haley, love you but that ain't the 1400 club 1400 club is a, is a whole different thing i you know so i everybody always get that wrong because i am part of the 1400 club through tiger talk but um kc 1400 is not the 1400 club so before I go any further, I want to make sure I nail that point home. We are not the 1400 Club. 1400 Club is awesome. You know, I'm you know I'm happy to be a part of the 1400 Club via Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club, but we are not the 1400 Club. So don't ever make that mistake. I know you meant good, uh, but this platform here is uh, taking it to the next level, man. So we're excited about it. I ain't gonna spend much time on the TV because we're really gonna spend. We're gonna go into that. Uh, it's not KC 1400 Club. It's not, you don't see club nowhere on the site. It's not KC 1400 Club. It is KC 1400 Media Group. That's it. That's it. Love you, baby. Let's keep it moving, man. We'll break this down a little further, but uh, shout out to the Hattiesburg Management Group, Mr. D, 
Uh, TD, this partnership came about through our big brother, KT Dub. Uh, KT Dub and Miss Ruthie spoke for at the Mississippi Alabama All Star game and mm. uh, able to build a, a partnership through the message that they gave, and uh, he was able to co collaborate. This particular management group actually they host the Mississippi Alabama All Star game, the coaches convention. You know what I mean? Um, that is it, that is how we got connected. Um, every time he goes in front of the people, he's always talking about KC 1400 Media and representing the brand, and I appreciate him for that being a part of this. And uh, just do conversations, man. We had a long, long, several conversations today. And like I said, we'll we'll spend a lot of – I'll bring you in the loop. You got a new email address. Zoe got a new – it's a whole lot that's happening right now, man. So I'm breaking the news to you just as I'm as, – as, as we – TD, we was talking all the way up until like five minutes ago. I was like, bro, I got to go, man. We got we to gotta get the show started. But I did want to go ahead and start here and say that. We also want to shout out our Toyota, uh, Canon Toyota Vicksburg channel sponsor. We appreciate the, the partnership. Shout out to Billy Clay and uh, and Greg over there. Also shout out Tim and and uh, and Terrence at Auto Masters, man. Um, not gonna spend too much time on those, but we got the big man coming up. Hope you, I know TD got his questions ready. He always had the best questions. Somebody said to me yesterday, TD. They said TD asked he asked the best questions on. The show. I said, hell yeah, you do. I said, because TD always asks the questions for the actual casual fan. He asks it from a perspective that is not someone as if it's not someone in the know. So they shouted you out, man. You know, said TD, uh, he, he got he always had really good questions, man. So they was looking for I said that to say that they were looking forward to this interview because they was like, you know. I know you're moderating, da, 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 but I always look forward to his questions because he always – so I wanted to show you some love, dog. I want to let you know, man. They they love you out there in the streets, man. They love you in the streets, big dog. Man, I, I appreciate that, man. And, and one thing I learned, you know, you know, staying humble. Man, I'm, I'm hey, I'm in the chat too. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm watching on TV. I'm, I'm a fan, man. When I get there, I'm happy to meet y'all as much as y'all happy to meet me. You know, okay. so it's all tiger love, so I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, man, it's been a good day. Look, man, I am excited. I'm excited, bro. We're gonna break <laughs> this down after Coach O get off. Hey, man, I watched the game from start to finish. I also watched the all corn Alabama AM game. Alabama AM upset all corn on the men's side, bro. Alabama AM was the seventh seed, all corn was the number two seed. They got sent home. But this was a hard fought game, bro, for uh our ladies, man. Preview. Really? Got a baller over there. I forgot her name. What's her number? Zero. I'll look at the stats here in a minute when we get ready to break this game down. But, man, heck of a, heck of a, heck of a, heck of a battle, man. They pulled it out. All you got to do in March is win. The objective is to win the game. Have one more point than the other team. We got two more to go get, and then we can horse that that that, that trophy and get ready for selection Sunday. Uh, not sure who we're going to be playing. We got – um. Who we got? We got Arkansas Pine Bluffs going to be paying, playing somebody. I got it on the schedule. We'll break it down after this. But, man, this has been tough. I don't know if you had a chance to watch this game. I watched it. Oh, yeah. I we'll get you quick thoughts for Coach O. Join us. Oh, man, it was very tough uh, for our game, a battle that, that's really needed, man. You I mean, you want to be tested. You don't want to go in straight dominating. Although you, as a fan, you want your school to go out and dominate, but you want to get battle tested early. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, that's all I have for now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to break it down, y'all. We're going to break it down. Y'all come on up, man. If y'all want to come up and talk some uh, basketball, look, we're going to break down the SWAC postseason awards, too. We got it all up there. We're going to talk about it, you know, and uh, we're going to definitely get into it, man. But as we stated, we got the man coming up, uh, Coach O. Excited to have him on the show. Excited to talk some Jackson State football. We are on spring break, so shout out to all the student athletes out there that got a chance to go home, be with the family, stay safe, get back to the campus uh, next week and get back to class and get back to doing what it is that you do. Um, but uh, excited to have him on. He'll be joining here in just a little bit. Let me make sure he got a text message, just make sure we're good to go. And like I said, it's over. Uh, uh, Rochelle will be on after. Rochelle will be joining us as well. So yeah, man. But we'll uh we'll just hang tight until coach come up. But no, man, I, I really enjoyed the game. 
Uh, I had to. I, I do this, man, and I, you know, I, I had to turn the volume down, bro, because mm-hmm. I just I, I can't listen to, to 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 our games. I can't listen to the commentating on our games. I just have to watch the game with no volume on it. But anyway, we ain't gonna worry about that. We got a new guest coming up, man. We're gonna go ahead and bring him on up. We got the big dog. We got Coach. Oh, what's up, Coach? What you say about it? <laughs> How y'all doing? Hey Coach, man, oh. man, man, so good to see you, bro. Good to have you on, man, and uh, appreciate you for taking the time out of your busy Wednesday evening and come sit on the screen and talk to us, man, a little bit. I'm, I'm glad you guys brought me on, man. It's it's been a long time. I hadn't seen you guys. Been a lot of growth going on over here, huh? <laughs> Right. Hey, us growing means that we're able to support athletics at Jackson State even even greater, man. We we excited about what we've been able to do, Coach, and we just want to do more, man. And 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 the best way to do that is to continue to evolve and try to continue to collaborate and grow as a as a as a group. Yeah, we definitely appreciate you guys. Uh, you do a phenomenal job just connecting with the guys. It's not even about the NIL. Uh, it's it's about the relationships. And uh, that's what Jackson State is about. It's about relationships. It's about family. And uh, this 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 platform definitely breeds to that because every kid that comes to our campus, they know about Ken Clark and the 1400 Club Media Group. They know about this platform. They listen. They they looking at the at the messages going by. So we appreciate all of that, man. I'm serious. No doubt, it means a lot. TD. Hey, good evening, Coach. Man, glad glad that you could take the time out to join us. You know, I know it's spring break or whatever. You know, you got a new family that you that you inducted into. That you <laughs> used to man. So we, we we appreciate you, Coach, coming on. Absolutely, appreciate you, appreciate you, and I appreciate those fellas too for allowing me time uh, to become a part of their family as well. So it's been a, it's been a great a great journey for me, and so I'm happy to be at this point where I can I can talk to you guys again. Good deal. Absolutely. So, Coach, let's jump into it. We, of course, uh, uh, Zoe will probably be on in a little bit and Rochelle will hop up. Uh, everybody working, you know, but it's all good. We'll get them on in just a little bit. But let's let's just get started with you. I got when a couple of weeks ago, uh, Austin finally drops the, all the edits. He rolling out the, the, the new staff, man. And um, we'll start with you. You got a new title and it's just kind of created a lot of dialogue because um this is you. This is unique for a college program, man, especially in HBCU. So we'll start there. Associate head coach and now the general manager of Go GSU Tigers football, man. Talk to us about what that role entails and how we get here. <laughs> it, it, just, it just sounds good. <laughs> Leave it at that. But no, man. Uh, I tell you. So I, I want to first of all uh, say thank you to Coach Taylor. Um, thank you to Ad Robinson. Thank you to Ad Kilbert for making it happen. Um, it's one of those deals where um, I don't think you can put uh, into words what I would do to make sure Jackson State football remains the, the creme de la creme of football programs in the HBCU world and, for that fact, in the FCS world. So the general manager title is, is – I mean, if you ask the players, I mean, it was what I was doing already. Uh, they just gave me a title to go with it. Uh, just kind of run the day-to-day operations of the program. Uh, trying to alleviate some of the the burden on Coach TC's back, and uh, making sure that we we operate in a way that is commensurate of of, of the entire university, a professional um, with with high character, with class, uh, but with a hungry mindset uh, to get things done the right way. Hey, Coach, I'm glad you mentioned that, man. It sounds like you and uh, you you and Coach Taylor been working together very close for a few years now. I'm pretty sure y'all been knowing each other, you know, even before start working together. It really appears that you guys have a really good relationship and that y'all vibe, you know, uh, off each other. Uh, how is that, you know, you know, working with Coach Taylor, you know, on, on a regular basis? I know everybody in the relationship going to have some clashes, going to have some disagreements, going to have, you know, but, you know, it, from from the very appearance, it seemed like you guys really vibe together on everything that goes on with uh, the Jack State football program. Yeah, uh, that's a great question, TD. I I say this: um, <laughs> it, it's not about football, and mm. uh, the relationship is is so much deeper than that. Uh, when you look at another man, and you can hold him up in his lowest moments, and uh, and when you can see him through rough patches, uh, it's it's a lot deeper than football. And uh, I have a certain leadership uh, leader mindset. Uh, 
mindset, I'm sorry. Uh, and what, what I mean by that is uh, I know my increase comes when I bless others. My increase comes when I uplift others. And uh, this is TC's program. And uh, I want him to shine. I want him to look good while doing it. And so uh, when I sit in that seat, man, just being by him, it's my friend, but it's my brother. And I want my brother to look good like any other brother would. You know what I'm saying? So it's, and I, I'm trying not to be so PC with the, with the answer, but it's just, it is what it is. You know, that's my dude, you know, and uh, I go to bat for him. The players see it every day. And I think that's why the, the, the team is so close because they see the two guys at the forefront of their program. Uh, they see us tight. They see us tight and we have our moments. Don't get it twisted. You know what I mean? He, uh, he corrects me when I'm wrong. You know what I mean? And I don't do much correcting because that's my boss. You know what I mean? But he, 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 he understands if, if, you know, if, Oh, you know, give some counsel on some, he listens to me. You know what I mean? He takes it into consideration and that's all you can ask for from a, from a friend, from a brother and from a boss. And I mean, that's, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Hey that, hey, hey, that was great, though, uh, Coach. You know, it, I'm glad you said that you're uplifting your brother because so many times you have people behind you pushing as if they're really uplifting you, but they really want your they really want your downfall. And it seemed genuine in what you just said in relationship that we, uh, you know, see with you and with, with you and Coach Taylor. Um, and again, the program appears to be moving forward. You know, everybody looking forward to the spring and to the season stuff like that. But I, I would like to ask you about. Uh, any form of aspirations of, uh, of, of becoming, you know, a head coach, you know? Uh, it, it's going to happen. And I put that in the atmosphere. You know what I mean? It's going to happen in due time. I'm not going to rush the process. Uh, but but whenever that door opens, I'm going to walk through it. I'm going to walk through it with my head high. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm using this time at Jackson State as a, as a training ground, as an as a, as a opportunity to prepare for it. So, uh my, myself along along with my inner circle they know uh, what my goals are and so definitely TD, that's one of those deals where it's gonna happen i, I believe that well we, well we're not rushing you away or anything like that coach don't, <laughs> don't think that's what it is i'm just saying you know we hey you know we hope you and coach taylor just bond this thing just take off to the next level it, it, it just you know I, I just know you know some people you know have goal and, and one thing i learned you know you know about our fans and us we're passionate and we probably some of the most passionate fans that you have out there in college football. And we go hard for our school and for our team. And anytime, you know what I'm saying, you have a, you know, you know, a, a, a straight cat to walk away from the program the day for me where everybody started to get down. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, you know, that's why, I, you know, I just wanted to ask you that, man, because I, I, I watched you coach uh, from the Shrine Bowl, you know, in the tight ends and stuff like that. And I know you have what it takes. So I know with a mind like yours, at some point, you know, being the man that you are, you probably have some aspiration of move, you know, being the head man wearing the hat. Yeah. I uh man, it's funny you say that. And, and if we got some swag fans in the in the comment in the in the chat box, they don't know who I'm talking about. Uh Marino Castle, you know, uh yeah. guys like that, you know, if you know yeah. Marino Castle, he was a smooth brother. Yeah, uh, but he knew how to win football games. I know a little history about you know uh, swag football. Um, you know, it's one of those deals where I, I look at those type of men and what it took for them to get to where they got uh, the the work ethic, the the energy. And I say Marino Cash because he's a big bright skin dude. So don't don't get me wrong. Now. That, that was just that was just a point of reference, you know. But uh, it's just one of those deals where I look at the history, and they say history often repeats itself. So I, I look at uh, what those men were like, and I, I look at the statue that they carried themselves in, and I understand that those men are the foundation of this conference. Those men are the foundation of HBCU football. So if I can just simply carry myself in that type of light, if I can simply, uh, I guess, put myself in their shoes, if I will, and treat my players how they treated their players with the respect and with the adoration that we all got to get a job done. I think I would just be elevated in, in the best that you have to come. And so when I when I operate in my space at Jackson State, I operate in my space knowing that W.C. Gordon is somewhere on a, per on a perch watching and mm. he's guarding his program. That's how mm. T.C. looks at this thing. Uh, Big Daddy is somewhere on a perch watching. 
Mm-hmm. He's guarding this thing. And so I would be less of a man knowing what I knew from the, the very day I was born about Jackson State football up until this now, uh, to this day now, not to be on my P's and Q's every day, making sure this thing ain't ran right. I asked for it a long time ago. I, I, I believed in it a long time ago. And so all this is a manifestation of those memories of those thoughts that I had way back when, when I didn't know I was going to be a coach, but I saw them dudes on the sideline doing their thing. And I said, man, I, that's that's pretty cool. And so I'm I'm living the dream. I'm sorry if I went off on a little rant. Oh, but, no, go, uh, go, go all the way yeah. off. <laughs> you don't answer it. <laughs> hey, coach, let me, let me jump in here real quick. Um, I kind of want to scale it all the way back and just kind of grab a little bit of the um, substance from when you first got to Jackson State. Because you've seen this thing. Man, you have been instrumental in what the J – for folks that just now coming along that don't really understand the way that – like the trajectory of our program now and kind of where it was, let's just say 2019. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Talk mm-hmm. about – the evolution of Jackson State University football from the time you stepped on campus up until now, because there's, you know, we don't have to bypass the previous regime, but I just wanted to get your perspective in a nutshell on what you saw when you first got here and what you see now, because I do want to get to the recruiting aspect, because I definitely want to doff my hat off to you as well as this, you know, and the rest of the staff, Coach, he's in everyone for the, this local recruiting that I see, it looked like a, it looked like a JSU renaissance almost, uh, and, and and from a Mississippi renaissance, I guess I could say. So let's just start there, and then we'll go a little further. Yeah, uh, man, I don't know if we have the time. Yeah, we do. to walk that journey. Whew. But <laughs> 2019, that. man, listen, listen, man, 2019. I'm gonna let y'all in on something, man. We uh, me and TC, we we were both on, of course, on the offensive side of the ball. I was the old line coach. He was the quarterbacks coach, and um. It was many days in that meeting room where we were kicking each other under that table, um, just to keep each other going. You know what I mean? Just it was a it was a different atmosphere for us. Now I was kind of just growing into uh, D1 football, uh, but I knew how a football program was supposed to be ran. Mm-hmm. And Coach TC had seen it done the right way on several levels, and he has he has seen how it was done in, in, in some bad ways on several levels. And so we both came in with expectations. Um, and I want to make sure I preface this by saying this was A.D. Robinson's. This was early in his tenure as well. And wow. so a, a lot of the things that was going on inside the football program at that time, and no, no, I don't want to – I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, but things were not ran like an FCS Division One big-time football program. And so seeing that at that point and not being able to create the change that I would have liked to have made at that point because my hand was only so small, um, I had to wait my turn. You know what I mean? And that's the same thing that uh, even Coach TC understood at that point. It was a matter of time because we knew, uh, not necessarily that it was given to us, but we knew if we stayed the course, we knew that we had the stuff that it took to run this program. And so those experiences then are very, very beneficial to what we're going through right now. And so I appreciate the men that I was in that building with because it was no, it was no, of no consequence to them. It was not their fault. Uh, it was just the way things were set up at that point. And so it was a struggle. Okay. Uh, but fast forward. Now you get Coach uh, Prime, you get Deion Sanders in the building. Um, things change. Um, you know, some financial burdens that were there at one point may have changed. They they were lifted because of connections or whatever they may be. Uh, the, the athletic department grew uh, rapidly at that particular point. Uh, things changed within the football uh, program that brought us to the forefront of all of college football. And so we saw a structural change at that point, but we, we also saw a change back to the character of what Jackson State football was supposed to be like. And so now me and Coach TC are sitting in those rooms as well. We have more, we have more input on what is going on uh, day to day. Um, Why Coach Prime definitely was the, the, over, the overriding uh, last voice in that program he he was he was he was a man enough. He was a good enough coach to us and for us, and a good enough leader to allow us to have our input in the day to day operations of the program. So I can't uh, go by that go by this whole conversation and not thank him for that. Uh, so as you fast forward through Coach Prime's era, 
and now you get to Coach TC Zero. Uh, we've seen how it has been done wrong. We've seen how it's been done on the championship level. So how do we merge those things? And when I say merge, not necessarily merging uh, the, the losing of 2019, but there were some qualities in 2019 that we still needed to keep. I want to make sure I, I, I say that. Uh, the, the character of the men in the building was very high. And we like that about that those men on the staff. Uh, but the structural side of what we started to do under Coach Prime, we had to make sure we kept that in place. And if you ask our players who, who played under Coach Prime and they're playing for us now, not much has changed when it comes to the day-to-day -day operation and how we move as a program. So I want to make sure uh, our fans understand that we still operate at a high level. We are the only FCS program with an in-house media person, all right? So things like that you, you may take for granted, but it ain't just happening at every one of these programs. Uh, we are a staff. We are a team built on a, a just a structure where we want to compete at the highest level in everything we do. Well, guess what? That goes back to before Coach Prime. <laughs> that goes back 30, 40 years ago. Absolutely. That, that's that's the blood of this program. And so I know I'm, I wanted to be long winded with this question because I wanted people to understand that the experiences of the last five to six years for us have all culminated into us being where we are today. And we are in great shape. We are we are building this thing. And I'm not going to get into other questions, but we are building this thing the right way. And when I say building it the right way, now we have to build for long term. It's not going to be a it's not going to be a, a, a flash pan type deal right here. We, we're trying to build this to where Jack State football is good for the next decade. And if we do it the right way right now, now we can we can drive this car and it's going to be hard to stop that train rolling downhill. TD? Hey, Coach, man, man you, you said a mouthful. And one of the things I have to respect, you know, um, a lot of us, you know, um, you know, felt how we felt. Um, you know, in the departure of uh, Coach Prime, but the fact that, you know, you, you know, you still able to give him his flowers and, you know, show appreciation for what you learn from, because, you know, we can learn from anything and anybody, even a baby, you know, but Coach, I always felt that something was, uh, was special about you. I never, I had never met you really before, but I used to be an advocate uh, Friday night, you know, uh, 10 high school games, you know, and I, I rolled solo a lot, but I remember you was at Callaway and I watched you coach, man. I, I loved your offense. So when you went to Jackson State, I was very excited because I was like, you know, the way he does, you know, run his offense and the way he handles his team. Because, you know, like I said, I watched you for you know, a couple of years that you were there, you know. Um, so the expectations, you know, uh, grew pretty well. I want to ask you, coach, uh, with your players, I know, you know, you, um, you go on your recruiting business and stuff. You bring your players in. You have them for a good three or four years and sometimes five. And you, and you grow a bond with them. Um, not only are you coaching those guys to be football players, you are coaching those guys to become young men, wives, fathers, you know, employees. Uh, how hard is it a lot of time to to – let them go. I mean, I, I know as a parent, sometimes you got to push them on out there and let them go, man. But, you know, with eligibility up, you know, you got to let, you know, you have to let some players go. Like, you know, you got, uh, um, uh, like you have DJ, you know, playing in the Legacy Bowl. You know, you've been with him for a while. It's time to let him go. And, you know, how hard is that? And, and what's your expectations, you know, um, for that young man or, you know, his players? Yeah, that's a man, TD. That's a phenomenal question. Uh, I've never, I've never even thought about the uh, answer to that question. I, and I usually try to stay on top of things. But to 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 be short and and make sure I give you the right answer. Uh, when they come in, I understand what the end goal is, right? And that's and every good coach understands is we are only here for a moment, and your moment may be six months, your moment may be five years, but. It, the moments that we have with you, we got to pull into you, okay? And so, well, you know, we'll take DJ, for example. I, I saw DJ come a long ways. <laughs> and, and me and DJ, we, we, we could probably share some stories where DJ, he didn't, he didn't like blocking at first. 
And by the time he left Jackson State, you know what I'm saying, he had turned himself into a very serviceable blocker. You know, he grew up as a as a player, but guess what? He grew up as a man. The toughness right. of blocking. And people don't account for that. It's a toughness that goes into that that sometimes only men understand. And so he grew into that as a player over time. And uh and so I just get joy from that as a coach. You know, you 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 know that you're on the gallon for a moment, T D. Don't you get attached to these boys? You know what I mean? Because guess what? You might get attached to that joker and he ain't studying you. You know what I mean? Like he ready to go live his life and you you chasing up behind him trying to make sure he good. And he be like, man, go leave me alone, man. I got a life to live. You know what I mean? So you you do what you can while you got them. And uh, the ones who reach back to you, you continue to help. And the ones who move on and they're ready to live life, you push them on and you pray for them. Wow. Coach, wow. that was outstanding, man. Zoe joined us. You got Zoe in the building. My brother from another. Yeah, my little big brother. <laughs> What's going on, Coach? Look, I, I want to ask you, I, I didn't catch the other question. I did want to ask you since, you know, being that you're from here, also, you know, knowing since from prime to Coach TC, and also knowing the way things were and the way things transpired in, in uh, Coach TC's first season, what's the biggest thing or the biggest change you've seen from uh, last season with that transition to TC Taylor to now, being that he's going into his second season? Because, I, you know, and the reason why I'm asking that is because, you know, I made a point on this platform to kind of tell everybody that, understand that you know coach tc is not he's not even seasoned yet you know when, when regard we're talking about uh you know head coaching and i'm like you know what we saw is not you know you ain't gonna see what you saw you know i even made the case that if if last season coach tc is a fifth, fifth year six years coach we probably nine and two or ten and one last season even the roster that we had Go ahead, Coach. I think Zoe, Zoe okay. Sigmund got a little shaky. Okay. Yeah, uh, well, I think the, the the biggest thing is you've had a second recruiting cycle, um, and that, that's important for us. We, we were one of only five teams uh, to lose over 70% of their roster uh, coming out of the 2022 season going into the 2023 season. Uh, I think we were only one of two teams to have a winning record uh, coming out of that situation. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, when you talk about replacing over 60 players. And so I think the staff at that point did a phenomenal job recruiting in that first year. But I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, it's very few staffs in this country that can go recruit that amount of players and hit on an overwhelming majority. But we right. did. We felt like we hit on guys that helped us win. And let's be frank, we were in two games less than a touchdown away from being 9-2. Yeah. All right. Uh and even in those, you know, outside of that, you know, the debacle in, in, in Texas, uh, we still should have been in the, in the other game against FAMU. And everything in that game, and I hate to I hate to use his phrase, everything in that game was self-inflicted. So I don't uh, – it is what it is. It is what it is. So I think we, we, we know going into year two, first of all, the talent level has increased. If you talk to our players, uh, the competition level every day is in, in practice. It's you got to come with it. You can't take days off no more. And you know what I mean. Last year, a couple, at a couple of these spots, you know, the, the guys kind of had us. You know, they they knew we didn't have uh we didn't have a lot of depth at they spot. You know what I mean. So they will try to dog it a little bit because they knew we were relying on them. Ain't no more of that. You know what I mean. If you hit that green grass at Jack State now, you better be coming. And mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, now we got a team that that is hungry and they're feeding off each other. Um, I was listening to. A conversation uh, with one of the guys we we just signed, and he he was just saying when he came on his visit, uh, watching them dudes work. Like if you get a chance, and I know Ken st stops by a lot. If you get a chance to see us work, you understand these dudes understand what our standard is, and the guys that have been in our program are not letting up on the standard, and they're not letting those new guys come in and do it their own way. And so we moving forward like that, brother. So I, I'm serious, man. We're excited and going to year two. But the biggest shift, the biggest difference has been we have been able to go in, get better recruits on this second go around, right? Really fill in the back end of this roster, bring in more competition. And then the next part to it is I do think we have upgraded in some of the spots from the coaching standpoint. And we'll get into that. But before we do, uh, TD, you want to go next? 
And then we got a couple of questions out in the, in the chat. I don't want to lose them. Coach, real quick, uh, Dennis Lucky put up here. He wanted some help on understanding the eligibility. It seems like some players have four years and other players have six years, probably referencing COVID. So if you want to touch on that briefly uh, in relation to why yeah. some have more seemingly more years than than usual. Yeah, and, and that's and that's a good question. Um, so I'm not I'm not going to profess to be the best in compliance, but the short answer is, of course, you just said COVID uh, gave a lot of guys that extra year that seemed like a six year of eligibility, but that's done. You won't see that anymore. All right. But what you do see, and we'll take the case of a Jason Brown, who was a quarterback last year, who played probably a decade. No, I'm just kidding. But maybe I think he, uh, he I think he had at least seven years. Uh, yeah, he seen. You, when you go through some hardships early on in your career, uh, the NCAA will work with you. Uh, so he had some medical hardships uh, that he went through. Uh, Jason doesn't have an ACL. Uh, now, and uh, he, you know, I can say that because he'll freely tell, freely tell you that. But um, he has some medical hardships, so they are they'll allow you to recoup those years if you don't play for an extensive period of time uh, during the early part of your career. I hope I hope that answered that question. Yep. And one more uh, one more question before you go. TD says, "How big of a deal is it to have a special teams coach?" Yeah. Uh, well, definitely having one that's more dedicated solely to special teams you know that's that's huge um you know i think we you know with coach hammock last year he had the entire linebacker room and special team that that was that was a challenge you know i and i appreciate him i know coach tc appreciates him for even taking on that challenge but now being able to bring javancy in you take some of that workload off of uh, coach hammock and you put it on coach jones um and the energy that he brings and that youthfulness and that that hunger to see his alma mater be great, oh, man. Uh, he's in, yeah he's infusing that into those guys, and it's important to have guys like him. You know he's a he's a Jackson State legend, but he really bleeds blue, and he is showing these guys what Jackson State football is supposed to be about. He they have a an example that is really close to them in age, but he demands the respect of his players. And he's able to show them this is what it is, and this is what it ain't. So that's that's big for us. Did he, hey, Coach? Um, you just mentioned uh, about you know rebuilding the team and, and, and your percentage of hitting on players that that was able to play and uh, you know increase the team was good. So with that being said, you know uh, I I speak on recruiting because that is an interesting. Um, area to me, you know, because I always wonder how you go about finding the player. What do you look, you know, you're on the internet, you know, you're going to somebody's house, other coaches calling you, parents calling you, big brothers, whomever calling you. What exactly um, are you looking for? Uh, are you looking for in a player to, to, to scout that talent to know that which are you recruiting for that particular position? Are you just recruiting for a great player you know, you might go look at a tight end and see that that offensive uh, tackle is, is just as good. That defensive lineman is just as good. What you just looking for talent, Pacific player? How do you go by scouting your talent? Yeah, um, just kind of a <laughs> that's another good question. So educational piece right here, right? So uh, it's it's kind of it's, it's ways to ways to do this thing. Um, it's seasons in recruiting, all right? So we're going to dive off into the season we are in right now. So the okay. spring season for us at the FCS level at Jackson State, uh, it's an evaluation period, right? So we're going out to high schools. We're going, we're, we're trying to dive into uh, every facet of where a recruit or a player is to find information. We're trying to figure out, all right, who's the players that are, are, got some room to grow, which most of them do, right? Or who are the players that plateau? This is what they are. They're not probably going to grow from this point. You're going to try to find that all out this spring. Uh, the disadvantage, TD, that we have in comparison to a Power Five or most Group of Five programs, we kind of recruit in the year. So if we're in this 2025 class, this spring we're recruiting and looking at 2025 prospects. If we get some 26 and 27s on our board, that's okay. We don't mind. We'll evaluate them. But we kind of stay within the year. Whereas an FBS program, Right, they're two to three years ahead. You give me yeah. so uh, that same kid that we we're just going to find out about. They knew about him when he was in the ninth or tenth grade, and yeah. so it may seem like we're playing catch up. But financially, we have to be smart. 
we can't jump out there on the kid when he's in the ninth or tenth grade. You know what I mean? We gotta let him develop a little bit more, see what he turns into. But that goes back to right now being an evaluation period for us. So you come out the evaluation period, TD. Now you bring those kids back to the to the table. All right, we're gonna sit down as a staff. Every kid that we go out here and, and, and pull, uh, we get information on whether it's transcripts, uh, you know, demographic information. We get all that in the system. We're gonna come back. Coach TC is gonna sit at the head of that table. We feel watch every one of these boys. We're gonna check them out. We're gonna see what they're about. Do they on the surface? Do they meet our basic criteria? Our basic criteria is by position. All right, so there's certain things we're looking for in the quarterback, running back, wide receiver. All right, but the overwhelming majority of the time we are looking for football players. And what I mean by a football player is a dude that is tough, that is relentless, that believes in competing on every down and that does not want to give up. And when I say when I say don't want to give up, when you bloody and you and you are running out, right? When that old soldier, and I don't mean to make light of it, right? The old soldier on the battlefield, when he ain't got nothing else to give, I guarantee you he's going to still be shooting that thing all the way to the end. And that's the kind of player we want. We want a player who is going to go until the very end and fight for us. And so that's why you have seen the recruiting get so much better over time because now we can go get a better type of player because our evaluations have gotten longer. Right. We're two years into this thing. So now we got some kids coming up now that we've been evaluating for two years and we know really what they're about. You get what I'm saying? So those. All right. So we're going to fast forward. Now we into the signing season. Now we kind of narrowing their board down. We did evaluations. We know what coach wants uh, as far as he's approved. I want to I want to recruit this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Now we got to figure out how we're going to sign these dudes, right? So now the coaches, now we're going to build, build a relationship with families, right? We build a relationship with the coaches in the communities. We're trying to figure out what's the end, the end road. That's where you guys as a fan base come in to help us. That's where when you get on social media and you and you really shower these dudes with love and you are genuine about it because they feel the genuineness, right? They know it's not a gimmick. They know it's not a game. They see it. They see the games. They see the atmosphere. Now we have a legitimate chance to sign kids that these other schools we compete against really can't get in on because mm -hmm. of you. You know what I mean? So I, I, I'm trying to be short winded, but I want to give you substance tonight, right? So now we have gotten we've gotten inside the house, okay? We we have we have building relationships. Now it's time to get that kid on campus, and that's where I come in at. I don't <laughs> lose when I get them, dog. I don't believe in losing. You know what I mean? Yes, if sir. anybody can, if anybody can sell the city of Jackson, you feel what I'm saying? How that? Oh, I'm telling you, I, I can sell this city. You know, and, and the reason I can sell it because I know, I know where every nook and cranny is. I know where the problems are. I know where the good things are, and I know how to highlight this city and highlight the people of this city and sell it and let these families know. If you send that boy to me, you send that boy to Coach TC. He gonna come back a man. And he's going to come back a man because this city is going to love up on him. They're going to protect him. They're going to feed him. They're going to encourage him. And when he play like crap, they're going to boo him. So he's going to come back a man. So I, when we get past all that and we get him off campus, now it's signing day. Now we're back in February, right? Now it's yeah. time to make, make that decision. And most times, if we went through that whole process with that young man, he's seen enough of, of Coach TC, myself, and the staff to know that we legit and we are genuine about how we go about our business and we we genuinely get those guys we want. Hey, hey, hey real, real quick question on something he just said. And so it, it, it kind of could pertain to um, one of the questions, you know, as far as what the fan has to do, uh, how they help with recruiting. But, Coach, you said something about finances. You said some some school may be looking at a player from the 8th, 19th grade, and then you, you mentioned finances. How does finances play a part in recruiting? I know you might have your traveling in this, but if a, if a kid is in the eighth, ninth, tenth grade, I'm sure you're not going to visit them or stuff like that. Say, tell us how does finances play a part in this recruiting aspect? Yeah, so uh, no different than that, TD. You you do have to go see them. You know, once you once you once you offer that kid, you got to start building that relationship at that point. You know what I mean? Um, and and, make, and your your primary. Your primary focus may not be going to see that ninth grade or tenth grade kid, but they need to see that block in the community. They need to see that block in that school. You know what I mean? So the the more we put ourselves out there, uh, and that's why our social media presence presence is so important because Jackson State we are reaching corners of the world that we we hadn't reached in a long time. 
I'm not going to say we never reached them, but we hadn't reached them in a long time. So we were back in those corners of the earth that we need to be in, right? Well, I can't put boots on the ground everywhere, but I do have to put boots on the ground in a very large majority of the Southeast. So how does money play, play into recruiting? Uh, I'm, something as simple as what our coaches pull up in, right? Let me ask you this, TD. If mm -hmm. if I was coming out, if I was coming, you went to Merle. Where did you go to school, TD? Ken. Coach, Ken, oh my bad, my bad. You did tell me that. So if I if I came to Ken and I pulled up in a and I pulled up in a Toyota Corolla, uh -huh. and I said, T -T, I want you to come play football for Jack State University, right? A first like, I okay, say, coach. coach. I would say first thing I would say, Coach, both of us can't fit in there. Facts, <laughs> facts. So I know, so it, that's a that's a good point, T.D. So I'm gonna pull up in the minivan instead. I'm gonna pull up in the, the JSU minivan instead, right? But then here comes this other coach right behind me. He's coming from Mississippi State of Ole Miss, and he's fit to pull up in his GMC Denali. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what money. That's what money come in at. You know, yes, if we and if we as a program, if we want to compete against, I ain't worried about competing against Mississippi State of Ole Miss. I want to beat Southern Miss. To, I want to beat them to sleep. You know what I mean? Mississippi State, Ole Miss can get their players. But Southern Miss, they got to see us. You get what yep. I'm saying? South Alabama yep. got to see us. Monroe, they got to see us. Okay? Right. I'm so, glad you said running, it. I, I, you know, that's how I live, though. I'm telling, you know I'm telling the truth, though. So yeah. if, if if I'm going to compete against those those schools, right, I got to pull up like them. And they're not pulling up in a Toyota Corolla. You know what I mean? And then when they come on campus, how do I treat them when they come on campus? Am I taking them to Burger King and McDonald's? Am I taking them, you know, to some of these smaller restaurants? No, we're going to take them and feed them. We're going to take them and give them the finest of what Jackson has to offer. It ain't right. cheap. You know what I mean? So finances not only play a major role from a from an aesthetic standpoint, it also plays a major role in a relationship building standpoint. And Trust me, you have to have money to compete against the very least of the big schools that we're trying to beat. Let me jump in. Recruit TD, you got to make sure you feed him some golden fish now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, real, real quick, I want to build on that, Coach, because this is the questions that are coming up. It's a twofold question, but it's right along with what TD just asked. One, one person asked, "What can fans do to assist with recruiting?" But I want to build on that and say. How can we as fans take what you're saying and actually help to expand on that recruiting budget? You get what I'm saying? Because we know everything is a budget, but what can – like, because a lot of people be like, what can we do? What can we do? Well, here we go. Let's ask the question and figure – and I don't know if it's if it's a – if it's just a – if it's cookie cutter, if it's just, you know, macro or micro. Just break that down for us real quick to build on that. Yeah. And uh, it, as long as you're donating to JSU Athletics, we can get to it some kind of way. <laughs> uh, as long as A.D. Robinson has the, the wherewithal to be able to cut a check to get us on the road to make sure we got the things we need, we're, we'll be fine. He has several campaigns going on right now. Uh, the first thing I encourage everybody to do, buy your season tickets. Uh, me and Zoe should have another commercial coming out here soon. And I'll just <laughs> get damn tickets. My bad, my bad, Zoe. I ain't mean to put it out there. But uh, get your tickets. That's the first thing you do. That's that's how you support the program. Uh I, the quickest way to support the program. The next thing he got is the 40 for 40. Uh, the 40, uh, if I'm saying that right, guys. I, you buy 40 I'm campaign. Wrong. Yeah, there you go. So JSU by 40 campaign. I don't, I don't know where I got 40 for 40 from. But you have smaller deals like that where you can actually donate on a much more grassroots level and still impact our day-to-day -day operations in football. So it's several ways to, to donate, but as long as it's going to JSU Athletics, it, it'll definitely benefit us in some way. Go ahead, so. Now, I Actually, I was going to um, I was going to touch on the whole thing about recruiting against Southern Miss because, again, you know, there's this whole perception, you know, HBCUs are lesser than because I've always also mentioned to Coach about what we did on the early recruiting season, like the number of guys that we got to come in. That's not normal for an FCS program, let alone an HBCU. So I want to speak to, you know, what we're doing on that recruiting front and, and what separates us from the other like FCS program, as well as how we feel comfortable competing against the USM or you, uh, uh, Louis, Louisiana Monroe. Yeah, so uh, we, we, we're doing a much better job on the evaluation process. Uh, just making sure right, if we're going to sign the kid, we have done our homework. We, 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 we feel like we know exactly what we're getting in the kid. And so when it comes to just how we kind of handle the mid-year process, a lot of those kids we, we have been talking to since last spring. 
uh, and we have been building those relationships. And even from the standpoint, you know, you talk about the Louisville guys, uh, their relationship started with Quake. But if we don't treat Quay right, if we don't treat him right as a man, as a young man that's growing, if we don't try to make sure that the needs that he has on this campus are met, uh, do we have a shot to get to any of those other kids? You don't. And so the first thing you're going to do, you got to make sure the program that you're selling is the program that you're giving them. You know what I mean? So we, we don't want to sell stuff that we can't or write checks that our, that our butts can't cash in, in, in so many words. You know what I mean? So make sure they get the experience that we promised them. Uh, but that's what we were able to do at the mid-year. Guys came in. Some of them didn't even make it to a game this season, but I give credit to Austin. I give credit to our fans. Uh, between those two entities, right, uh, they get to feel what being a part of Jackson State football is like. They get the visuals from Austin, but they get the energy from our fans. When when a kid post uh, offered by the Jackson State University and you go look at the likes on the post and they got 600 likes on the post. And then uh, one of our rival schools down the street uh, gives them the same, you know, offer and they got 30 likes on the post. <laughs> Love it. it it's, it's, it's setting a tone. It's setting a standard. And them kids, they, uh, they, they, they love it. You know, we're in the age of attention and that's okay. You know what I mean? We, we got the right yeah. fan base to feed them all the attention they want, but guess what? Our fans also know when you're playing with us too. And so that's what I love about Jackson State fans. They're not going to let you play, play over us. So we're going we're gonna to recruit the guys who want to be here, and the ones who don't, we'll let them move on. But uh, as far as that mid-year class, man, because I don't want to get too far off that, it was a really good class, but it was because the evaluation process started earlier, and, and we were able to know exactly what we needed and wanted at the mid-year, and it, it kind of went from there. Hey, hey Coach, uh, uh, you, you were speaking on um... – you know, going against recruits with with the South Alabamas and the USMs and the two lanes and stuff like that. Um, if, if, if you feel uncomfortable with this question, then you don't have to answer, of course. But um, what about the next level? I mean, what's you know, uh, we we love. I know we got to get there. You know, we gaining traction on you no know, uh, progress in the program, and I'm actually definitely um, in tune and loving this conversation. But with that being said. What are the chances uh, uh, of us moving to play the USM and, in, 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 you know, getting in the same division with those guys? Well, T, that's, that's, a, that's a level of uh, leadership that I haven't reached yet. You know, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> but I will say this from, uh, from, from a JSU football standpoint, uh, wherever, whenever, they can get it. So we don't, we're not going to shun away from it. If if they call A.D. Robinson and they drop the right amount on that check, we're going to pull up. And if they give us some more, the boom going to pull up. And if they give us some more, we'll come back for two years. So, <laughs> hey, don't worry. We don't have a problem pulling up, man. We're going to play football because we think we're recruiting the guys that can go in there and compete against those type of teams now. Let me ask you, Coach, um, let's get into the staff real quick. You got a whole – conglomerate of uh new new faces in the room uh we had some um it's a two-part question let's talk about the the coaches that actually did move on for other opportunities you had coach billerman went over to austin p uh coach bradley and onya Buaga went over to south alabama and um somebody else left i can't remember uh mo harris went to auburn uh let's talk about you know, what it was like to um, work with the staff. Also, Jashel, uh, we appreciate her for her time there. we got a new football ops. Uh, but let's talk about the staff um, that Coach TC has been able to assemble. Uh, a lot of people ask a lot of questions about um, the different positions that came in, and they noticed that it was a position that hasn't been out there. You don't have to touch on that if you don't want to, but I did just kind of want to get your overall thoughts on the staff. He, that coach was able to assemble last year and the transition into the new staff. Cause you did touch on, you know, feeling like this staff is, 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 is a, is a great staff uh, and, and going to do some great things in 2024. Yeah. That's uh, so, and I don't want to keep saying it was a great question, but these are good questions guys. So I appreciate them. Um, as far as the staff last year, man, first of all, those are our friends. Um, yep. We, we built relationships with their families. Uh, we built relationships with, you know, just, we know those guys. We we hung out outside of football, and uh, I want to applaud them for doing the work the right way, 
and being able to increase their territory. Anytime you have an opportunity to increase your job title or your or your 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 job description or or even money, of course, right? You want to take those opportunities because guess what? We are preaching that to our players. We are preaching to our players that you do things a certain way, you'll be blessed for it. And so th they are living testimonies to that. Uh, does that impact players coming and going from this program? Absolutely not. It doesn't because the player experience and the coach experience are two separate things. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and people need not to confuse those two. Uh, players come to a school true enough in a lot of cases because of the coach. But I think Jackson State has a unique advantage because they come because of the coach, but they also become they come because of the fan and the experience that they would get here. And so with that being said, it doesn't really matter who cycles in and out that door as long as the right people are here to sell the city, sell the school, and sell the fans. Uh, so, again, I appreciate all those guys that were here that moved on, and I, I wish them the best. Fast forward. Uh, the staff, we just assembled. I like them. I like them. I like them a lot. Uh, <laughs> I, and I tell them that, you know what I mean? But the conversation that, that we have with each and every one of them, and, and I, I, I'm just going to be very candid right, right here. This could be a good time and a long time. This could be a bad time and a short time. Or it could be a good time in a short time. And I don't want that to go over nobody's head. But for those coaches, they get it really quick. Uh, Jackson State has high expectations of how we handle business, how we win, and what we do on this football field. If you don't meet those expectations, I cannot promise you tomorrow. Okay? That's just what it is because of what we have built as a program. Uh, and that goes for myself. I don't – please don't let me – like, I'm humble in saying that. If I'm not getting the job done, coach has every right to get rid of me, okay? Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I'm saying, all right? But those coaches now understand that expectation when they come in that they're stepping into a winning program. When you step into a winning program, it's a certain thing that you have to call do called gatekeep. You have to gatekeep the winning program. And what you have to gatekeep is the standard of that winning program. And so these men that we have just hired, we feel like they, they exceed the, the, the mindset and the capabilities from an X and O standpoint, but we also feel like they fit us as people. They mm. fit the culture of the city. Uh, they, fit, they fit what we're trying to do as a program, but also as a school. And so we think they'll be able to sell the university better. Uh, the diversity of the staff is going to be beneficial to the to the entire program, but also to the university. And then we'll build a, we've built a young staff. And when yep. I say young, when I say young, I'm not I'm not saying inexperienced. We're young with experience, but we we are young enough to where we can relate to our guys in those rooms. But they also feel like they can come to us and talk to us about anything. And so it creates unique, unique dynamics in the relationships that we have within our facility. But again, I absolutely love these men that we've just brought in. Each one of them has their own unique story. You know what I mean? Norfolk State, University of Florida, North Carolina a and You know what I mean? The, mm -hmm. These young men are coming in from schools that one, at one point would not cut, leave to come to Jackson State. Right. I'm just being honest with you. But now they, they they look across the country. They see what Austin is putting out. They see the content. They see the character of our program. And you know, they, they say, hey, hey, man, I want to come down there and see what y'all doing. Because guess what? When our coaches leave, if you do it the right way, every one of the coaches that have left Jackson State in the last four years has gone on to a higher paying job, if you do it the right way. Right. Hey, 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 Coach, Um, I think – I know that you pretty much have you and Coach Taylor pretty much have the love, the strong support of Tiger Nation. Uh, I remember you came on screen um, a, a while ago. You know, everybody was you know in disarray, and you said, "Hey, we know what's going on. We watching. We handling the things. You know, from the backside, and that kind of calmed everything." So, with that, you know, being said, I, I think we as Tiger Nation look at you and Coach Taylor as the foundation and how strong that foundation has been laid and how strong it is. So no matter what storm come through, Tiger Nation trusts you and Coach Taylor to get the, 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 the best material to rebuild that house. And from the looks of it, that look, that look exactly like what you guys are doing. Now, I hadn't met any of the coaches from looking at the resumes. And, and, and as I spoke, trusting in what 
you and Coach Taylor has been doing for the university and seeing and you know and, and what y'all have done last year, you know, with chaos, you know, we trust in it, you know, it, it, that that this thing is going to be it, this thing is going to be right now. Um, we have a lot of armchair coaches, so expectations are high. You know what I'm saying? How uh, do you, you know, grocery store, family dollar, different places, people going to always throw their advice, their opinions at the way they think it should be done. I, I know you probably just smile and say, oh, yeah, I'll take that into consideration and keep going. But <laughs> because they got to be hard, you know what I'm saying, knowing that you have a fan base that's passionate and everybody feel like, you know, they could call the plays or do a better job, man. You know, how, how do you deal with that passion? Because I know it can be overwhelming at times. Yeah, T D I uh because I don't want to make nobody mad. You know what but, I mean? But I got you know I like to be real. <laughs> T D, I uh man, pressure ain't nothing. Ooh. You know what I mean? Like like that ain't <laughs> let's go, I, baby. Like, <laughs> I, I just don't man, I just don't I don't I don't live in a I don't live in a uh I don't live in a pressure mind state when it comes to football. I love this, man. I love this. When them fans get to talking crazy. No, you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't live and breathe JSU football eight days a week, twenty six hours a day, like I do. Like you don't know what's best for this program. No, when I go to sleep at night, I'm not, I'm thinking about players. I'm thinking about what we can do to make this program better. My family, oftentimes, come on the back seat because of this program, and I appreciate them for sacrificing their time for Jackson State football. So when somebody in the stands talking crazy, man, dog. Ain't nobody over there at your job telling you you ain't you ain't turning them boats on that truck, right? Uh, you ain't, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say flipping patties because we got hundred dollar fans. They accounting majors, they business man. We ain't, I ain't gonna disrespect <laughs> nobody, but I'm just saying I'm not coming over there doing TK at TK at your job. I'm letting you do your job, but our job is entertainment based. So if my job is entertainment based, it comes with pressure to produce a product that they enjoy. I knew that when I signed up for it, TD. So them getting mad about it, dog, man, I ain't studying that. It is what it is. I love it, but that's a great question. But uh, even with TC, man, I, and because I, I, I owe it, I owe it to him to make sure I let you know, like we talk about these things. We talk about the armchair quarterback, not not in a negative way, but we want to make sure that guess what? Sometimes it's a voice that needs to be heard. We don't mind yeah. listening sometimes. We're not crazy. You know what I mean? That 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 other perspective sometimes is worth listening to. But guess what? We cannot confuse the two and say, hey, we got to listen to them and they're going to do our job for us. No, we're going to do what's in the best interest of Jack State football. And sometimes what looks like the it may be the best in the best interest of Jack State football in the short term, or when that play is called, it may not be the best interest three or four plays down the line. So it's just it's small stuff like that, but that's a great question. Man, I have so much respect for that in, in, in what you do in your uh along with the players, because I can only imagine you sitting, you know, you sitting up in the stands as a as a wife, you know, as a daughter, as a son, and a player on the field, and their parents or the families in the field, and someone yelling, number 81 sucks. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you gotta sit there and deal with that. Well, shout out to Jensen. Just in the chat too. I'm, I, my next question is going to be how you deal with this Joker Hill, man. I can't, I can't oh, go, go ahead, finish. go go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, TD, go ahead and finish. I'm gonna get to this Joker Hill. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just about to say, I, I know that's hard to do, man. So I just was wondering, you know, how you go by, you know, um, having to deal with that. Yeah, I know you got to have thick skin. You can't respond to everything, you know. And I've said on this platform before, you know, I, I'm not on social media like that, Coach. For real, like I say, I tell them, but I only have an IG page, and I, I rarely check that now. Um, but with that being said, man, I, I hear, you know, Ken and, and Zoe and Marcus all upset by something that somebody didn't say, I man, I can care less about, but uh, Ken, I know Ken ain't got nothing to do with that. Don't put me in on that. <laughs> As I was saying, TD don't, TD don't see the, the, he don't see it like I see it, but it's okay. Go ahead. Keep going. I mean, so, I mean, the, the point I was making, man, I know you hear the noise, <laughs> And I know your family hear the noise and, you know, you it, it, it pretty much more so dealing with, you know, your family has to endure that stuff. You probably have a tougher <laughs> skin, but it probably, you know, reach out like that. So 
um, anytime a fan, you know, you, you're seeing those things and you're hearing those things and you know you're doing the best you can and you know you're giving your all, uh, I know it probably could take you down, you know, through that sometime, you know, spiritually, you know. Yeah, I, uh, and, and I'm glad you brought that part up. You know what I mean? Real quick, I'm just, I, um, I do believe, honestly, that the families do catch a bad break in the bleachers a lot of times, right? But at the same time, we as coaches, and we talk about this, we have to be smart about where we put our families. You know what I mean? Um, if we are struggling, uh, if the team has been struggling, you may need to put your family in a different area. You know what I mean? Put them on the other side of the band in the horseshoe area where it's more of a party. And they, if we struggle, they still hear the band. They they halfway come. You know what I mean? They, you can survive. Don't put them over there by the reserve seats with the, the blue bloods because they going to catch it. You know what I mean? So a little insight like that. Guess what? If, if myself or Coach TC hadn't been around here for a while, we couldn't provide that to these coaches. You know what I mean? But those little things, just understanding that, guess what? Uh, it comes with the expectations of this job. And that's college football. No matter where you where, where you go, it's somebody crazier. It's a, it's a crazier fan somewhere else. And so you just focus on doing your job and making sure you're taking care of these kids the right way, and you will always be successful. So, Coach, let me, uh, let me jump in here uh, real quick. Coach Saban was just on Capitol Hill talking about, you know, obviously the obvious college football changing a lot. I wanted to get your thoughts and perspective on this NIL, man. NIL is uh, now part of college football. It's, it's more than likely here to stay. You see the student athletes uh, have a whole lot more, you know, uh, power than what they've had in the past. And you take somebody like Nick Saban, who many herald as the GOAT, step away from the game because the game is different. How have um, you guys and, you know, uh, you and the staff been able to manage uh, the expectation of name, image and likeness and uh, manage the things that are happening at Jackson State and, and your thoughts on uh, maybe how we can take that and, and utilize it in an even greater manner to uh, advance JSU athletics? Yeah, uh, so from an NIL standpoint, um, we, we try not to have that conversation with our players. And and we kind of we, we leave that to to the people who, first of all, who are clear to have those discussions, but also to the people who can adequately take care of our guys when those discussions happen. So you know, with, with guys like you, Ken, and your platform, and we have several other partners around the program with with uh, platforms and with uh, clothing lines and other other type deals that take care of our players from an NIL standpoint, uh, we kind of let that conversation happen between compliance and those people, right? Mm -hmm. But in the recruiting process, we make sure our players understand that we are one of the few FCS schools where substantial NIL opportunities are provided. We don't know where they're going to come from, but we do understand that we are a performance-based NIL program, mm -hmm. okay? You're not going to get an NIL program, I mean, uh, NIL deal from Jackson State University before you play it down here. That ain't how we operate. Now, if you do, then you have shown yourself to be something special, okay? And we know what we're getting. But for the overwhelming majority, you need to come here and show yourself approved to the fan base. You feel what I'm saying? To the coaching staff. To, 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 to the university, because we're not only trying to make sure you look good on the football field, but NIL, uh, I wish it stood for, had a leadership component to it, because I need you to look good in that classroom. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, you know, I just think, you know, from the NIL standpoint, we know how to approach it. Uh, we know what our players need, and we know how to address those needs, but we try to stay away from it because we don't want to get into a competition with bigger universities talking about, hey, we can do this for you, we can do this for you. That ain't how we operate. But we can make sure that after you have shown us the type, the type of player that you are, uh, resources are available, uh, and they'll address you at that particular time. Uh, Jay Shaw just kind of put that in the, in the comment section. It's, it, you basically closed with the with the uh, the explanation today, so how do you combat the schools with larger collectives coming for your high performance? You know that they, they call it poaching. You know that's going on. Smaller athletes that perform at smaller schools are obviously being uh, recruited uh, to 
transfer out and come to those bigger schools. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I, um, I'm a, that's a great question. Um, and the, my answer may not be the answer that you want, but I'm going to be straight up with you. If a school comes and poaches one of our players, he can have them. Hello. I just want to make sure everybody has understand that. Um, <laughs> he can have that, whatever that school is, they can have that player. And I am not telling you anything that our players don't know. I stand in front of our players. Coach TC stands in front of our players. And they know that if a school comes and they want to take you away from Jackson State University and you want to go to that school because of a financial uh, mm. promise, please leave and leave immediately. Uh, we have a standard here. You know what I mean? And the standard is not paying athletes to play football. Now, granted, we do understand that that has changed in this this day and time and we have to make sure that our players are getting the extra resources that they need to be successful off the field but this is one of the few places and, and i say this uh being the fcs where you still have some just old school football principles attached yeah. to it yeah and we want to keep some of that pure that pureness to it so like i said man if the kid, the, if the kid got one foot out the door because of a financial agreement with another school, man, he need to be gone yesterday. Wow. Yeah, double wow. <laughs> wow this, yeah, it's real, there, coach. <laughs> yes, so, 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 coach, um, like you said, you, you know, you were talking about recruiting and we coming up on the spring and everything. Um, from my vantage uh, point, it seemed like the recruiting has been spectacular. Um. I'm not sure how you know you guys see it, and from, from we get from what we getting from the chat and from people that they love the recruiting aspect. Did is there one particular area or several areas that you guys um, feel like I need to horn in on for uh, more depth um, or anything of that nature? Uh, we got a couple of spots that we need to to show up. Uh, we're definitely going to go sign another quarterback, um, linebacker. Uh, a couple, and we we kind of we got two commitments uh, in the past week at linebacker, so we may be finished there. Um, but those were two primary areas, and we want another edge rusher, uh, somebody who can turn that corner, uh, generate yeah. pressure without us sending extra, uh, you know, extra blisters. You know what I mean? So those are the areas I think we could definitely probably add a piece to. Um, we, we're in a good situation. We got we got roughly 90 guys on campus right now. Uh, to have 90 players on campus uh, at the FCS level, really at any level uh, in the spring, that's that's impressive. And and it's only because we did a good job at the mid year getting guys in here, but also we were returning such we were young last year. People didn't realize it. Like we had a young roster last year. And so I'm excited to see what a lot of these guys do with a second year in this conference and a second year in this program. So, uh, Coach, uh, speaking of recruiting, though, I, I did I did just notice that they are talking about actually moving up signing day um, in December. You know, the early signing period was in the latter part of December. Now they're talking about moving. So now it looks like signing day for early signing day is going to be right around the SWAC championship. Have you guys uh, – what are your thoughts on that so, rule change and how does that change the philosophy of the coach, a recruiting strategy for us seeing that we get a lot of guys in for the spring, which is unprecedented, by the way. A lot of people take for granted what we do, but for an HBCU to have as many players as we do to sign in January, I mean, December and be on campus in January, you go back to Tony Hughes, we had one. I want to say his name was uh, Brandon Frazier, I think. That was the first time. John Eric High School out of New Orleans was the first early signee. And then it just got more and more and more. And now what we had, we had a several, which is just seems unprecedented. But your thoughts on the date change? Because I think what they're trying to do is have signing day before the portal opens. Right. Yeah, okay, so it, it, on the surface, they're moving up signing day. but you know, and I still have to dive into the rule a little bit more. You still have a window that's open to sign guys all the way up and probably until uh, the week before Christmas. 
And so even after that, going back into the new year, we're well, going forward into the new year, you have a window where you can still sign transfers and, 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 and whatnot. But the signing day, kind of just speaking of what you're, you're speaking on, Ken, are more so high school guys. Mm. Um, and what that changes for us is uh, we got to just move our timeline up a little bit. Uh, I generally don't, because of our staff size, I, you know, I've kind of been against doing a lot of uh, official visits during home game weekends. And now the average person would say, well, why, coach? You know, you sell the atmosphere. Uh, they come here, they see it, they'll fall in love with it. Well, a lot of times we can get that same kid to come on unofficial for a game weekend, and it's no cost to us. And then we bring them back on an official v- a visit after the season is over with. The staff has a better opportunity to spend time with them and really build relationships with them and, and, and just kind of give him the needs he needs to have on that visit. So we have to be careful with that piece. You know what I mean? Just scheduling visits and all that. But ultimately, Ken, when it comes to moving that signing day up, identifying who we want at the mid-year, okay? So if it's a high school kid, we need to get the transcript in earlier, right? So we'll know if they're coming out early or if they're coming out in May. And we'll still be able to get the guys that we want to get. The hard part is that period between all corn and, like you said, the SWAC championship game. Well, in the past, we were able to use that as a preparation, you know, time for our staff. Now you're going to have to use that as a preparation time, but you're going to have to do a lot of recruiting uh, in, during that time because we, I know everybody on this call, on this on this live, expect to be playing in that SWAC championship game. So instead of us just getting ready for a SWAC championship game, we're going to be as a staff doubling down. We ain't leaving an office to 10 or 11 o'clock at night, maybe midnight. And if – it get really tight. Guess what? Bring you, bring your blanket because we might be here, right? And we'll recruit on top of p- preparing for that swag championship game. But the short answer to all that, it don't matter. We're not gonna make excuses. And if we gotta sign a kid, we better figure out how to get it done anyway. So I, uh, I definitely gotta dive into that a little bit more, Ken. I don't think um, the legislation has been clear on it yet, but I do think it's coming. Hey, hey, coach. Um, along the uh, along the lines of recruiting, you know, a, a lot has changed now. Again, with like I said, with social media and a lot of different programs and different uh events. You know, as far as the HBCU Legacy Bowl, as far as the Shrine Bowl, um, the HBCU Combine. You know, if, if you get an invite to it, so a lot of a lot of not in the past for not coming to a, um, a, a smaller school was I'm trying to go pro. I'm trying to get seen. I'm not going to get seen there. With all the other, uh, what, what, what is your approach to a young man and his family once they feel like, okay, I'm not going to get the recognition or the spotlight that I need to get to the next level. You know what I'm saying? If I sign with you. Well, a uh, couple ways we, we attack it. First thing is we, we're the only HBCU who have a draft pick in the last two years, um, for home of four Hall of Famers. Uh, the, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, numerous other NFL uh, stars, the head coaches, uh, and I say stars, uh, but even just players who were on rosters who were contributors, right? Uh, your head coach was a guy that played at Jackson State that had his opportunities to go to play at the next level. Uh, it's plenty of ways to sell – uh, the NFL, XFL, uh, USFL experience, CFL experience for players, right? Uh, but the biggest thing I tell them, and they can see it for themselves, when they come to practices in the fall, or if they had a chance to come watch us practice, it's very rare that you go to a practice at Jackson State now and it's not an NFL scout there. And that's the beautiful thing about what we got going because our evaluations have been better because we're bringing in better talent. Guess what? The NFL franchises are believing in what we're doing and they're going to make sure they come see the talent that we're putting out. Right. So we got pro day on March the 25th. All of our guys will be able to participate in pro day. We host the pro day for all the schools in the state of Mississippi outside of the major universities. So if it's not old Miss Mississippi state or, uh, or Southern Miss, they come to Jackson State. That in itself 
tells you what the NFL and the pros think about the product that we put out at Jackson State. So we got a lot of ways that we approach that thing in a, from a recruiting standpoint. But at the end of the day, when you can sell the fact that you got James Houston, you know what I mean, who who was at a power five school, who came to Jackson State, believed in what we were doing at Jackson State, made a decision to change his position. Right. He had to go through a position change and he believed in us. At first, he didn't. And he'll admit that himself. He didn't believe in it at first. Right. But then he made that change and look at him now. So when you can sell those type of experiences to guys, they the, the thought process of I can't get to the NFL from uh, your school because it's a small school. It goes out the window. And I like to tell those guys a lot of times, TD, guess what? If you go up to that big ocean that, at that power five, you might get lost in the shuffle. When you come down here, you might shine like a diamond. So which one do you want? Which one do you prefer? And so sometimes they had to sit back and they had to do uh, take a second thought on that. Right. And coach, and we actually seen that happen, you know, seeing, uh, you know, a, a player was really shining and then they go off somewhere and got lost. Um, and I think the Celebration Bowl, especially with the being in Atlanta, you know, you have a lot of people there. So that's why, you know, that's our goal to definitely always get to the Celebration Bowl. And Coach, I mean, um, I think you guys are doing y'all thing. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's no question about it. I mean, I'm excited um, about what's going on, Coach. And, um, we, we, you know, we, we look to see what the product, you know, what the, what the end product is. Absolutely. Uh, I agree with that as well, Coach. Uh, what's your thoughts on this team as you see it assembled and kind of like the expectations for the spring and, and the 2024 season? I guess we can wrap up there. Uh, but someone did ask in that question your thoughts on, on this team and, and how far you see us being able to go in year two under Coach TC. Really, really excited. Um, and Zoe kind of alluded to it early on the call. Um, and this, the mistakes that you made year one, you don't expect to make them year two. Uh, one of my pet peeves, and just give you some insight, uh, just trying to make sure I, I give you some substance, right? So uh, one of my pet peeves last year was the penalties. Uh, just dumb football. I hate – I and, and I'm not speaking to myself uh, exclusively, but I know TC is the same way. We hate sloppy football. Like, we loathe it, right? We really hate it with a passion. And one of the things about sloppy football, um, it brings about a lot of penalties. And so one of the first discussions we had with the team uh, when we commit sp uh, spring ball, when we started spring ball, I should say, uh, we had a – I did a presentation on penalties, on types of penalties, um, on what penalties cost us in hidden yardage, uh, what were the national averages in penalties, how do they affect winning and losing, um, how do they affect just different statistical categories, right? Well, we wanted to paint the picture to our team that we're going to be a smarter team this, this year, right? And it's starting this spring. We're trying to teach a better brand of football. And what that means is paying more attention to the details of the game. So just being smarter from that standpoint, focus on, on, on what matters. And the thing that matters to us most is daily improvement of our players, all right, so uh, this spring, man, I'm excited. I'm excited. We have some pieces in place. We'll move some pieces around uh, a room that I'm really excited about and not to just start doing this because uh, I can say something about all of them. I'm really excited about the wide receiver room. There's mm. some dudes in there. Yep. There's some dudes in that room, and they can run, and they big, they physical, and they got a good coach. Uh, coach Marshall is coming in from Norfolk State, and he's doing a great job with them. I'm excited about that room. Our quarterbacks won't have an excuse, right? Um, I'm excited about the O-line room. But I'm going to stop right there. But I'm excited about the O-line room because of the depth we have built. This is the deepest O-line room we have had since I've been at Jackson State. That's including the Coach Prime years. Uh, we have talent on all – we are three deep, and we got talent at every, every level. I'm excited about that. And we still got four more guys who hadn't made it to campus. I'm really excited about stuff like that. So when you talk about going – Going forward, um, it's so many things we, that we did to try to improve this roster. The whole D-line pretty much came back. You lost one, but we added almost four pieces, right? So the depth is there now, right? It's just different different deals. The secondary. The secondary is as deep as it has ever been. Yeah. The competition is at an all-time high. 
the kicker, we got we got the the the, the specialist room is deep. You got two of everything, so we're not gonna get caught in the same situation that we got caught last year. So oh. you know, I'm just you know when you ask me what what do I think about the team currently, I. I, a, a brother once said, and I'm gonna let y'all figure out who that brother was. We're gonna undersell and we're gonna over deliver, yes. and that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, hey, we do, hey, we doing that on this channel now because we ain't gonna. We, you won't catch us on wax talking. About, I, I said it like this to so all the players: we love y'all. We we great on the relationship, but you got to go prove it this year. We'll we'll hype you up after you do it. I ain't selling no this one here no. Nah. Go show us, and then we'll do. Because there's one joker that's in this chat. I want to seriously ask about him. What is the ceiling of Jensen Riley, man? What, what are we gonna get out of Jensen this year? Because he'd be cutting up in the chat. We know he's YouTubing and all that good stuff. But I love him. Yeah. But I want to get your thoughts on him. Having coached him, Ooh. I know he can be a great talent. But let's let's let. That's the that's my last question. I'll let TD close it out, and then we'll be done. go ahead. And remember, you keep it real, yeah. coach. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, man. This might this might be the hardest question of the night. <laughs> just say, uh, y'all can't see my hands. I'm over here grinding my hands. I just just say, <laughs> hey man, listen. I'm gonna tell y'all. Uh, it listen. I uh, and I'm so serious when I say this. Uh, in your coaching lifetime, and and Jesse, I know you listening to this, and I'm I'm serious. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. You only you only come across players who who you will care for life only so many times. And this young man, I love him like he my own. And I mean that. Uh, me and Jesse have conversations uh, that that he knows I'm, I want to see him win. And it ain't about football. I need to see this young brother win because his spirit is right. His heart's right. You know what I mean? You know, I know y'all see the joking manner that he, uh, he, he always has, right? I don't let everybody play with me like that, Clint. TD, everybody can't play with me like that. You know what I mean? Me and Jesse got a special relationship. I let them slide with some stuff. I don't let everybody slide with. Jesse had been in my house. And ain't many players have been in my house. Jesse had cut my grass. Do y'all know that? Jesse cut my grass. Wow. Yeah, like me wow. and Jesse, we got a different relationship. And I, I, I'm not. I'm gonna say this. I, and I ain't trying to put him on front street. When Jesse, um, he was just trying to make a little extra money. You know, he wanted to cut. He said, "Coach, can I cut your grass? Come on, just cut my grass." But he didn't realize that uh, we wanted to sow into him, so he was trying to cut grass. We bought him the lawnmower. So you know, you know, it's just one of them deals where it ain't just football for us, man. Like we want to sow into dudes where if he wants to win in life, I want to be a part of that 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 win there, and that's when I really get happy. But. Uh, all this other stuff Jesse be talking about, he know not to play with me. <laughs> hey, hey, coach, hey, coach, um, I have I have two, two maybe three questions for you before we depart. And you just kind of spoke on one. You know, Tiger Nation, we love our fans. You know, we want to do everything we can. Where does the buck stop with the fans? And you know, far as the support, the you know, nothing like that needs to really transpire, you know, to, to respect boundaries with the NCAA and stuff like that, you know, uh, you know, you, in a situation where you, you, you in McDonald's and you, and you see a player, you're like, hey, I'm going to buy this Big Mac for you or something like that. Is that off limits? Yeah, that's all that's off limits. You know, um, I, I think the biggest thing, uh, what we need our fans to do is the, the, the engagement that they have been doing, the online engagement. Uh, not harassing, but uh, showing showing interest. Um, drop a nugget about the university. Sometimes you just you just send a, a player a message that suggests you know you just just tell them uh, about your experience at Jackson State and why Jackson State means so much to you. Sometimes that's the difference in signing a kid. Uh, it ain't always financial. You know what I mean. It ain't always um, it ain't always materialistic. Sometimes kids still need to know that they're loved and wanted. And that's where our fans come in at. Um, other fan bases cannot replicate what the fans of Jackson State do. They have tried it and they have come up short every time. Uh, our fan base understands that the, the, the standard that, we, that they set for us as a fan base, it's a certain mode of operation that they have to uh, proceed under to keep us at a level. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. they know they have to operate high. 
if they want us to keep winning at a high level, right? So that means the donations, the season tickets, the online engagement with the recruits, all of these parts of being a fan are important to Jackson State football. Uh, I don't need you to be necessarily a fanatic in the recruiting aspect, but everything else, be a fanatic. Be a fanatic in your giving. Be a fanatic in your support to the university. That's where you'll be a fanatic at. Uh, as far as recruiting, be your genuine self. Uh, Jackson State people are salt of the earth people. Be that. And I guarantee it's going to help us recruit every kid we want. Excellent. And, and the last question I will have for you, um, you have any updates or, you know, when we're down at the HBCU uh, Legacy Bowl, we heard um, – a lot of great things about John Huggins mm-hmm. in in um the scouts and you know his numbers he's finishing what top three in a lot of different categories. Uh do you have any any information on him and how he's looking in, in, in his uh draft process? And, and and second part of that question that you can ask which would be the last, how often uh do uh, Isaiah Bolden or or you, you speak with those guys or James Houston as far as coming back and speaking to the players? Uh, so the first part of your question, um, John John is doing a phenomenal job going through the pre-draft process. Uh, John, John has done everything in his power to sell himself as a man and as a football player. Uh, pro, like I told you, Pro Day is coming up on March 25th. That's going to be a big day for John. He's going to have some pre-draft interviews at Pro Day. He's going to go out there and he's going to run a good time for the scouts. And uh, I think that's going to help solidify uh, his opportunity at the next level. Uh, I hadn't really gotten a draft grade on him uh, and for various reasons. Uh, I don't need a draft grade on John. John, John needs to be drafted. Uh, if if an NFL team value, values um, – a multi-dimensional player, uh, if they value a freak athlete, if they value a young man that has room to grow, he's he fits the bill. So I, I definitely think he's going to get the opportunity, but I think these next couple of weeks are going to prove beneficial to him as far as where that will be. Uh, the second part of your question, uh, and you might, because I got it talking kind of long, what was the second part, TD? Far, far as former players who's made it to the league, yeah. who tested the waters, you know, do you ever, yeah. you know, uh, invite them back? Do they ever reach back out to the team, you know, to to speak with them and, and let them know, you know, how things are going? Yeah. So no, you you uh, those guys always got. They know it's an open door. So the unique part of my time, you know, even with Coach Prime, every player that came through this program, they had to come through Coach O. And so I built relationships with every one of those dudes and every one of those dudes had to come through coach TC and the same impact that I had coach TC had. And so those dudes always stay in contact with us. They know Jack state is home. Um, We want them back as often as we can get them back. I think uh, from my understanding, James is in town tonight um, for, Mm -hmm. for an event. You know what I mean? So uh, those guys, they came and while they weren't here a long time, they immersed themselves into the community. And they immersed themselves to Jackson State culture. And they would tell you they love Jackson State like none other. Oh, like yeah. It's a different type of love. You know what I mean? They love it. So they they know, and, and I, if one of them is listening, they know it's always an open-door policy for them to come back home. And with that being said, we know Nugget and Dallas got picked up. Um, yeah, Massachusetts uh, Pirates. By Massachusetts Pirates. And, yep. and um, so, we, you know, we wish those guys luck, you know, and uh, do what they're doing. And it must say a whole lot. Uh, for uh, you, Coach Taylor, the coaching staff, and JSU as a whole, speaking on John because he he had exited the program, and it shows the volume uh, of the program and what you guys had in steel, how much he believed and trust in you know what what you guys were building for him to return, you know whether you know in, in his best interest or the school interest, but everybody ended up winning. So again, that says a lot for what you, uh, you and Coach Taylor um, and the other staff members are building right now. You know, for the young man to even want to come back and out and render his services to JSU football. So we wish him well, you know, in his endeavors. And uh, and again, Coach, we appreciate what you guys are doing. Uh, this uh, the fans have been overwhelming with, you know, enjoying your interview and everything, Coach. So and I learned a lot about you. 
I learned a lot about you. So again, I, I appreciate you, Coach. Coach. Yeah. Before you go, I do have one more question. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I didn't think about this until TD was just saying it. Um, how do you feel about Coach Quinn, Terenzo Quinn, being elevated to defensive coordinator? I, I just I can't get off the screen without at least shouting out Coach Quinn. I spent a little bit of time. There's a reason I wanted to ask this. I spent a little bit of time. Two things. I interviewed Jaheim Hazel. Hazel said Quinn was probably – the, no, not probably. He said he was the best DB coach he's ever had in his career. His ability to break the game down, talking to Coach Quinn and just talking football. You know, he's shooting pool. You know, he's doing how he do. Got the little smirk on his face. He's a football guy. Just uh, I was really excited and happy that Coach TC decided to go that route. I had said it. And I, you know, I was just like, man, I hope because, you know, I always thought he was a great coach, but I did want to get your perspective since you've been in a room with him for a couple of years, uh, just what that meant uh, to being able to see him elevate to that defensive coordinator role. Because he was intense as all get out at the one practice I went to. So thoughts on him and then I'm done. Okay. Yeah. Nah. I, uh, first of all, congratulations to T. Quinn. He deserves it. Uh, man, I, I, you saw him smiling the whole time you was asking the question because that was the, that was the easiest hire we made. I'm serious. That was that was that was without question uh, the right guy for that job. Uh, his energy, uh, his love for the game of football, um, his passion for developing players, uh, his knowledge. It it was the right time. I'm excited to see what he's going to do with his imprint on that defense. I think it's going to be really special. Um, I also know that, you know, I talked to him this morning and uh, we had a really good conversation and uh, he made the comment, you know, hey, coach, hey, I got the I got the youngest defensive staff in the country. I mean, I looked around. We averaged about 27 years old. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, said, I, said, <laughs> really? <laughs> I said, I said, I said, well, T. Quinn, if it move, you better hit it. And so at the end of the day, <laughs> that's all we expect. Like, you know, hey, get them get them dudes to flying around, that energy, that juice. That's what we want to hire a bunch of juice guys. Yeah. They know football. That, that, that ain't that ain't gonna be no problem, I promise you. But we for that that juice and they're gonna play physical. And, and I, I know the, the Tiger fans love that dark side defense, right? What's up? It's got to come back. And so we that that's that's the that's the goal. And I think T Quinn was the right man to get that done. Man, this has been wonderful, Coach. Man, we appreciate you. Two dates, everybody. In uh, uh, the uh, the pro day, March twenty fifth, right? Yes, sir. And spring game is April the sixth. Man, we want everybody, everybody, man, pull up, man, come to the game. I know last year we had a little weather. Hopefully, the weather's is cooperative. The boom is going to be in the place. They're going to be doing what they're doing, Coach. You can take us out. Anything you want to leave us before you get out of here, man? I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. I know TD. Uh, did as well as well as Zoe and the family, the whole crew, um, have just enjoyed having you on here, man, and just taking your time with the questions. But uh, you got anything you want to leave us with? I'm done, and I appreciate you, brother. Yeah. Listen, I, uh, I I I love being able to kind of close out these calls with you. You know how I am, Ken, because I always want to drop some love to these fans, um, JSU fans. I, I know uh, we've been quiet. Uh, we're not the type of staff that's going to give you a lot of bravado. Uh, we're going to let our work do the talking. And I hope you have seen over the last year uh, the type of work we're trying to put in to make sure you guys uh, have something enjoyable every Saturday in the fall. Uh, Jackson State football means so much to Coach Taylor and myself, but we know it means just as much, if not more, to you. So I hope that going forward and, you know, in the past months, in the past, you know, in the past season that we can honor you and we have honored you, but we can continue to honor you with the way we play and the way we execute and the way we operate our program. So I want to say from the bottom of my heart, I thank you guys. Uh, please spread this word to other fans that may not be on this live stream uh, from Coach Taylor and myself. We appreciate you in more ways than you can understand. We thank you for being the type of fans that you are. And please, as long as I'm here and when I'm not here, never change. 
Be the type of faithful that you are. D, I love guard the yard. We're going to see you in the fall. But before we see you in the fall, make sure you're in the place April the 6th at 3 o'clock p.m. Amen. 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 And <laughs> hey, 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 you know what, Coach? You know, with having the program that, that, that you guys are really building, it's helping all the other athletic departments on campus. Um, uh, do you guys push the football players to patronize the, you know I mean, to, to, to go to other sports and, you know, and, uh, and they, it just kind of, you know, I mean, you, I know you can't tell them what to do, but, you know, uh, the baseball team doing well, different things. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell you this, Tini. We don't, we don't have to because winners hang with winners. And that's what the campus is full of. Man, everybody winning. So they gravitate towards each other. So it's a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? You will look up and you will see that half the football team at the uh, baseball game or the softball game, at the soccer game. You know what I mean? So uh, it's a family atmosphere, man. But that's a great question. But, yeah, we uh, we don't have to encourage it. You know, we don't have to. They, they are supporting each other. And I tell you this, uh, before I let y'all go, one of the things that we're going to do, because this is just – it, it means something. I saw this coming about the band directors. And this, so I'm going to drop y'all some, some right here, right? I have talked to Dr. Little, okay? Um, they're going to send one of their core directors over to Jackson State football so we can teach these young men the alma mater, okay? Because we want stuff done the right way. You know what I mean? So it's little stuff like that. Love but it, I, I'm going to tell y'all this. Hey, I'm going to tell the core director, they better be able to sing it in three parts. So they better sing it right. <laughs> like Fat right. East Side. I wonder what it's like. Fat East Side. Lean on me. Who taught y'all that? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey, Coach, man. We appreciate man. you, man. We know it's late, getting late to you. Know it's late, getting late to you. We're going to finish up the show with some other sports stuff, man. But this has been an absolute treat, man. I knew you was going to come blow the, blow the roof off this thing, man. And I, I just – I'm tickled pink, man. Can't wait to uh, get back over, watch watch some practices, and and just see what's the, you know what happens with this team in 2024. It's gonna be an exciting year. All right, man. Appreciate y'all, guys. Y'all stay blessed. Yes, sir. Hey, coach, appreciate you. You have a good night. Man, that was awesome. Yeah, it was, man. That was outstanding, bro. Uh, appreciate coach for coming up, man. I hope y'all stick with us. Uh, we definitely got um, we got some more stuff we want to talk about, man. Goodness, goodness gracious, alive, man. Hate to just transition right into um, <laughs> into uh, everything, but we're gonna we're gonna since Coach O said it, give us just a quick second. Uh, we're gonna pause for a quick message from our AD, and we'll be right back. Great day to be a Tiger. JSU by forty campaign. Coach Taylor, I was just thinking. I was sitting in my office, and we were talking about Jackson State athletics. The tradition of Jackson State. You played here. What if 50,000 alums gave $40 a month for 12 months? Man, that would be huge. That's money in the bank for hey, an athletic well, program. Let's do this, Coach. I'm challenging all 50,000 alumni of Jackson State University, supporters, fans. Let's give $40 a month to JSU by 40 campaign. 12 months, 12 million, September to August. Let's win championships in the classroom. Let's support Jackson State University. Let's support athletics. And let's make sure our coaches and our student athletes are successful. So again, Coach Taylor and I are challenging you, all 50,000 alums, $40 a month for 12 months to support Jackson State athletics. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Support the JSU by 40 campaign. Visit gojsutigers.com forward slash JSU by 40. Oh, man. Yes, indeed. And we're back. Hey, man, y'all let us know how y'all feel, man. How y'all feeling in the chat? What y'all think about the interview? I thought it was a slam dunk. TD, great questions, bro. I know y'all was going to come with it. Um, I, I really wanted to just kind of sit back and just let it come organically, and it did. Uh, just outstanding. I had a great show, man. That's outstanding. That's out. That was That was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, and one thing Tiger they see, it just goes to show you, you know, with this platform, you know, um Ken is a very trustworthy uh gentleman. And I would say that, you know, wholeheartedly. So everything that we're doing on this platform that we're attempting to do is definitely from love. You know, yep. it's not a scam, it's not a game, it is it's not to, you know, uh mislead you in the wrong direction, you know, and, and Coach O, 
you know, coming up, you know, kind of help solidify that, man. You know, Ken put in a lot of work for what he does. So, uh, again, man, I appreciate you, brother, as well. Um, yeah, man, I appreciate you, for sure. Thank the um, Tiger Nation, man. So, we hope y'all enjoy the interview. More to come, man. Let, like, take, please take heed to what Coach uh, O was saying about the support. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, of the players yeah, or not to do. Go ahead. I, I love this, Val. I agree. We're trying to keep this Wednesday special guest thing rocking and rolling. I got a lot of folks in mind that we're trying to get on, um, but we're going to keep that thing rolling, man. We're going to keep it rolling. Um, and like I said, the sky's the limit for for us just as a platform. We're just really getting started, man. We're in the infant stage. I mean, we had someone to really take a look at what we were really doing. And TD, man, um, it has been nothing short of magnificent. Like I said, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate Zoe uh, and, and uh, KT Dub, Marcus, Rochelle, and, and Tiger Nation, those that support us. Because uh, without them, we're not able to do what we do. It's just a thought. It's just an idea. They give us uh, uh, the, the resources to be able to move in the direction we're looking to move into. Uh, but I just want to say it's coming. What's coming down the pipe, man, is going to be – to take this thing to the next level. So it's levels to it. It's definitely levels to it. And um, we're looking at getting some major, major partners uh, to, to partner with us in, in our efforts to really be a uh, beacon of change for uh, JSU athletics, man. So uh, just, just, just get, as the old saying, get in the game. You remember the EA sports, get in the game. You know what I'm saying? Get in the game, man. So, um, but I'm excited, man. I'm excited. You know what, Ken? You know what, Ken? This is what, uh, Women's Month? Something like that, you know, recognizing women, yeah. man. You know, you know, it would be good, man. I, I would definitely like to talk to the retired uh, volleyball coach, man. Rose Washington. Boy, wouldn't it be a treat to get on? They did honor her. I actually got that content. I'm going to put that out there. Um, it's really – it's at the bottom of the app. If you look at the uh, the ticker that's scrolling at the bottom of the screen, I'm starting to think folks really don't look at that thing. But uh, I'll put that up there. If you guys want to donate to the cash app, feel free to go ahead and do so. Uh, I just want to mention this, though, TD, uh, because we use YouTube as a platform. We use YouTube as a vehicle, uh, the platform that we that we do have. Uh, we're looking to really grow uh, our membership outside of YouTube because what we do is way bigger than YouTube. So the purpose of like expanding this website, TD, is for us to be able to brand with local uh, community businesses, businesses. Uh, uh, the community as a as an individual unit, you can partner with us in various different ways, and, and 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 I'm not even speaking to any of that just yet. I'm just telling you what's to come. So I just want to kind of prick your consciousness right now, and let you know that, look, man, KC fourteen hundred brand is only going to grow, and it, and when you see that, it's it, it, it's going to create other opportunities, man. Where we where we looking to expand uh, the media um, of lane that we're in and take this thing to the next level it's, it's, it's amazing man uh what was what's to come I, I can't really get into all of that um but i'm telling y'all man i wish i could like try to i, I I'm, t I'm i'm on a high right now not necessarily from the interview but the interview just kind of put me over the top i was already you know what i'm saying just full before i even got on the screen uh, because i see uh i do have a vision for what we want to take this thing and we and this is TD, we're going to create a, a, a JSU Rosewood, man. Yeah, I said it. That's right. We're going to create a JSU Rosewood, bro. I mean that. Uh, 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 um, and what I did today was I wrote down my vision for this for this platform with the, with with this with this with this crew uh, that I'm with, and I'm blessed to have these guys. TD, y'all see, this, uh, I don't want to go and, and get all sentimental and stuff, but I'm amazed at how it came about. It all happened organically. All of this started from a hook, you know, from a dap at the uh, what was it, Miami, bro? It was. I think that's where we started at the, the, the yes, international that? hotel. <laughs> yeah. And then it kind of, you know, Zoe and I have been, you know, tight for a minute, and then KT Dub come along, just as you know. Um, so it, it, it is what it is, man. I, I just appreciate uh, the whole thing, yeah. man. So I'm still uh, high on the interview, bro. Interview is amazing, man. A lot, yeah. a lot to take from that. That's why I'm I'm not jumping all the way into another sport just yet. We will in just a minute, but we'll. Uh, I tell you what, before we do that, I'm gonna drop the link. If you guys want to come up, chop it up with us. Give your thoughts on the on the interview. We'll chop it up with you guys, and then we'll close out the 
the show with the uh, we got some we got some basketball to get into and baseball. Just a touch bit of a tad bit of baseball because uh, the game last night, bro. Hey man, we whooped them boys up, didn't we? Yeah, man. I yeah, I had a chance to uh, yeah. Yeah, it was good. It was good. <laughs> we'll get to it, man. We'll get to it. I had shout out to Vaughn. Vaughn texted me and said, Ken, uh, they got that swag rule. We swacking these boys right now. I was like, what? And she's like, yeah. She sent me the score. I was like, whoa. Then they stopped in top of the eight or something like that. Yep. 11 1, man. Shout out to the baseball team. Whooped up on Grambling. Uh, but but uh the, the, the chat's open, man. Feel free to come up, chop it up with us. We love to have you guys on if you got a Got anything you'd like to express or add to the commentary, uh, give your thoughts on the show, whatever. Uh, feel free to do so. It's open. Uh, if not, we'll move on. But it is Women's History Month, TD. Thank you, Brother C. Lee, for that. I appreciate you, as always. <laughs> so anyway, let's jump into it, man. Uh, We'll start here. We'll start here again, as we stated. Shout out to our ladies. We, we're excited that they um, started off, man, a little slow. And then we got kind of got into a groove, separated a little bit. And then third quarter was a little shaky. and uh, But eh, they was able to close it out and, uh, and and make some things happen, man. Hey, hey Coach uh, Coach Clark, help me out with something, man. Yep. Um, the full course press against us kind of kind of make me well you know, they scout us well every easy. team does that you know yeah. why they do that td because if i'm scouting us just being honest uh the scouting report is going to be we are susceptible to uh, turnovers if we apply pressure uh we still got to we had a we had us man we had a stretch in the third quarter that was just turnover 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 and it just it drives me insane because it's like, my goodness, man, we gotta we gotta do a better job taking care of the ball. And you can see the frustration on Coach Amiga Reed's face, and she, but she, I loved her poise, man. I, she was extremely poised today. Like it was almost like she never looked like she was panicked, even when they closed the gap to about five. Mm -hmm. and she called the timeout, and she was just like, man, y'all, we we we. She knew we we weren't playing the level that we needed to play at. And, and listen, I got to give Prairie View got that, that young lady. I think she's a freshman uh, that, that played for them. Man, she's a baller, bro. I'm a yes, zero. Man, she's mm -hmm. a baller, bro. I'm talking about she, she ambidextrous with that thing. You know what I'm saying? Got a good handle, can shoot it. And uh, the big girl in the middle got in foul trouble. Uh, but we got into um, – we got to the free throw line, TD, a lot. And we were able to apply some pressure to them and, and call some fouls and – that's the that's the that's the sign of a winner, man. Another sprint, Payne. That's her name, Miss Payne. Miss Payne is a baller, man. Um, over at uh, Prairie View, man. Hutchinson so, won too bad herself. Yeah, the referees. See, the, the, the referees were terrible, by the way, man. I, they were terrible as usual. I'm not gonna get all into the, uh, uh but this they, there was a couple of calls that just stood out to me that I thought that was absolutely horrendous. The flopping call, they called flopping and called a technical on us, bro. I was like, y'all ain't sophisticated enough to be calling no flopping call. The second call, TD, was in the fourth quarter when Kashana Luckett went baseline, got hit across the head as she was laying the ball up, and they said ball out on the sideline. I'm like, wait a minute. She was shooting. I was just like, are you serious? Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, man. Oh, Payne is the senior. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Payne is the senior. Oh, Payne is a senior. Okay, okay. I thought she was a freshman. Okay, thank you, brother. Payne is a senior. Okay, gotcha. I wasn't sure if she was a freshman or a senior. But uh, yeah, man, I was just like, but again, I'm like, at the end of the day, you have to play knowing that you can't rely on the referees to bail you out. You got to take care of the ball. Um, and she got not only – oh, yeah, Kishana got bust across the head, man. <laughs> she got wrapped across the head and fell down, bro, and they didn't call nothing. But it's all good. We won the game. Uh, here you go. So he said the full court press gets us because it takes a couple of trips to recognize it as if man's uh, – if it's man or zone press. Once we recognize it, we do it. That is true. We did do a lot better, Brother C. Lee, after we um, – 
have been in it for a minute. Our our issues are usually in the half court, TD. Like it could be careless passes. It could be, yes. uh, you know, Tilly Bowl. Uh, Tilly uh, got to get her feet set on that pump fake. She be moving a little too quick. Couple of travel calls. Um, couple of bad passes here and there. And the game, we just made it way closer than what we should have made it. Uh, I'm definitely going to be watching that game uh, with the UAPB game uh, tomorrow. Let's 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 take a look and see um, who where we at, and then we'll go a little further. Let me let me put that back up here. So UAPB Alabama A and M. So tomorrow at um, at five thirty. Um, yeah, five thirty p.m. You got. Arkansas Pine Bluffs gonna be taking on Alabama A and M, and we'll be playing that. Uh, we'll be playing the winner of that game. TD Grambling knocked off uh, uh, FAMU, sixty-six to sixty. Uh, pretty good. Uh, pretty good game there. Uh, it looks like Southern and, and Grambling is probably gonna make it to the. Now we don't know. So, Southern versus Alcorn. I I got Southern ladies winning that game, uh, and then I see Grambling and Southern playing in the semifinals. I don't know who's going to win that game tomorrow uh, between um, Alabama A&M and UAPB, but it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. And the tournament, bro, tournament is different than regular season. Everybody's is 0-0 when you get to the seat, when you get to the tournament. What you did in the season don't matter. You did enough to get there. You just got to win. Um, but I'll tell you this, too, and I, before we go any further, TD, look at, look at this. Alabama A&M upsets all corn. So, listen. Listen, Grambling just beat Alabama State. You got Southern versus BCU. And then you got them two juggernauts on the left side over there going to be canceling out each other. Need I say, Jackson State men have probably the best route to get to the championship game. We beat Texas Southern tomorrow, TD, which we split during the season. We can absolutely beat Alabama and them for a chance to get to the championship game. That's the hope. That's the expectation. Hey, man, look, uh, we'll get into some of the season awards. Matter of fact, we can we can jump right on into it right now. But uh, hey, if you want to go ahead. Yeah, man. One thing for to do that, uh, even going back to uh, the game on Saturday against Valley. Uh, our, yeah. our poor guy got a little lax with it. Look, girl just took the ball and just went down and scored. That, that, you know, that little girl, <laughs> that, that young lady, grit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She was like, I know we're going to lose this game. I know it's only five seconds on, but I'm going to pick your pocket. And take it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then she was excited about it, bro. She was like, I, you know, like she had the game winning shot. You know, so we got to yeah. we still got to be even more careful with the ball, especially when you're coming out of the playoff. Like they said, man, it's one and done. It's one and done, man. One and uh, done. That's right, uh, our Sultan. That's right, bro. They got to play ball from the jump and don't look back. It's just that simple. At this point, it's when to go home. This March badness, baby. We got to go make it happen. We won our first one. We got to win the next one. We get to the championship game. We win that one, and we cut the nets down. That's the objective. We got two games to win, bro. So now we're officially 19, uh, and we're 19 and 0 in the swag this season, uh, looking to go 21 and 0. So we got to get we got to get two more. We get the rest. We get the scout tomorrow, and then we get to practice. Get a good practice. Good nice rest. Get back for uh, Friday, and we battle it out and make it happen again, man. Um, but let's get into the awards. We'll, we'll start here. Uh, you you said you was at the baseball school. Uh, you was at the baseball game yesterday. We we beat Grambling eleven to one, and um, just wanted to highlight Joseph Eichelberger again. His month of February was at nothing short of outstanding, bro. At a six ninety batting average, twenty hits, twenty RBI, seven stolen bases. He had a nine thirty one slugging percentage and a seven fifty on base percentage, which is pretty damn outstanding, I must say. Uh, outstanding uh, month of February, bro. Right, man. First, I want to say uh, shout out to Mister John Bennett. You know, um, met him at the game last night. Ken, he said he's a, a diehard supporter. Say he gave me the time. Man, he said every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, nine o'clock, I'm tuned in. I said, sir, well, we we greatly appreciate you tuning in and appreciate the support. Uh. Ackenberger, uh Ken, he he hit that ball, man. He's he's a pretty good. Um, he's a good player. He's a lot. He's he's a lot smaller than I thought he was, though. I really thought he was a big guy, you know, a slugger like. Um, 
but he, he's he's not a very big guy, man. But he's powerful with that bat in his hand. Yeah. Um, think Rodriguez was on the mound. What you know, Coach Co- Coach Omar was changing our pitchers pretty good. He brought a couple of relievers up. Um, and man, I, I, our team looked pretty good. Our team looked real good. I plan on going to a lot more of the games and getting more acclimated with the players and, you know, the style of play and what they like to do. I see they like to steal bases as well. So, uh, yep. yeah, man, we, we had we had a uh, successful stealing. I mean, you know, it's fine that you, you know, we probably up stealing. But, yeah, I think we had about three stolen bases. <laughs> and they, they they was on point, man. Because I love hearing TD talk baseball. <laughs> hey, stop it. <laughs> yes indeed man we had a great show on monday man outstanding show on monday but mo coming up to talk some baseball a lot of a lot of uh supporters really love that show uh we'll have you we're definitely gonna uh hopefully we'll have you we'll have you back on monday mo if you don't mind uh we got we got alabama state coming up friday saturday and sunday so we're gonna um we're gonna watch those games and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it on uh on monday all right, let's get into it, man. Uh, postseason awards, uh, no, 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 no real mystery here. Coach Tamika Reed wins the SWAC Coach of the Year back once again, back to back to back, the best in the business, the goat. Uh, love the graphics by the SWAC, I must say. Uh, Angel Jackson, uh, Defensive Player of the Year, TD, Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, very, well, I, I think she was absolutely, uh, she she did earn it. Um, no. Player of the Year from the Jackson State's football, football Jackson State women's basketball team this year. Um, I can't say that I, I can't say that it's surprising. I can't say that it's a, it's a it's a surprise that we didn't have a player because our team played an extremely balanced brand of basketball. Team basketball, TD. Our scores scoring averages look like this: our uh, Avent twelve points per game. Bowler, 12 points per game. Crump, 12 points per game. Angel Jackson, 10 points per game. So we had four players that averaged double digits, uh, but they gave the player of the year to, uh, I think, it, uh, Ariana Grizzle from um, FAMU, mm-hmm. the young lady from FAMU. Uh, she averaged about 18 points a game. Eh, you know, player of the year, their, their team was, what, 9 and 20? Seven seed, it was uh, it was pretty. I, I, I pretty much figured they would go that route. I thought Zay Green could have also been a candidate because she averaged what 17, 6, and 5. And fam, I mean, not fam, you uh, UAPB had their first winning season in 27 years, and yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm not shocked with it, you know what I mean, but player of the year. Grizzle had some great offensive outings, but she played on a team that it was only two players on the team that averaged double digits. It was her and another young lady, and the team was wasn't a really good team at all. So, winning matters in my book, but I don't have a vote. I'm not taking anything from the young lady, but I knew it was going to be hard for a Jackson State player to get it because we played such balanced basketball. Thoughts on? Yeah, man. I mean. Um... If the young lady played like that, I mean, I agree with you, you know, as far as uh, you was to go for, you know, on a winning record, man. But if the young lady was doing this, she was all the team had. Yep. Being a man, I, I give her props. You know? I give it to her. They won more games, I think, than they won in quite a while. So I guess that counts for something. No, I'm not taking anything from Grizzle. I, I said it was the pretty obvious choice. Right. Uh, I was thinking, you know, Zay Green possibly. But hey, I will. Yeah, I, I will say this. Uh Angel Show why she was defensive player uh she did today, man. She had I know at least four blocks and one yeah, of them was a block. They called a foul that wasn't a foul. Oh, it wasn't. I know on the big girl was she was she block. Yeah, I right. saw it. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that wasn't a foul. So and you know what? You you know what, Ken? I think um that was a couple of times, you know, and again, I know they probably running their sets. I mean, you you you're the basketball guy, man, but that was a couple of times Angel got that ball, you know, out round the free throw line a little above, man. We should probably, you know, if she got an under. I love the give and go game tonight. Yeah. I actually saw a lot of offensive plays 
you know, what, what some offensive plays being run by the by the ladies. I like the rotation of the ball, you know, going going to the open man. Uh, we didn't have many uh, three point attempts tonight, Ken. Not too many. Um, you know, Avan had her usual. Taylor uh, Bowler had her usual. Kashana Luckett had a couple of them. Not, not too many, but uh, the objective was to attack the paint, get to the free throw line, make them foul you, and they did a good job of that. Yeah, Avan shot that thing I'm over my head court this. Yeah, she gonna let that thing ride. I told you she <laughs> never saw a shot. She ain't like. Yes, indeed. Uh, let's move right on to the. Uh, oh, whoa! What just happened? Sorry about that. Didn't mean to push push the wrong button. Um, shout out to uh, Maya Crump, Talon Bowler, uh, Tilly. Uh, she uh, first team all swag, bro. First team all swag. Uh, I felt like we could have had three. Uh, you could have had it, Avent. Hell, you could have had J Angel Jackson too. But um, both average twelve points per game. Very balanced. They could have been co player of the year if I'm in my book. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, it's all good. Uh, man, you know, uh, Tila, Tila Bola, she come off to me, man. She's a solid killer. You wouldn't even know she on the team. She, she just flies so below the radar and just yep. do her job and go home. <laughs> That's you know, right. So, I, I mean, I, I love to see her play, man. I like her game. Uh, I like for her to get a little more fired up, man, and, and, and just shoot it. Sometime, you know, she'll, she'll drive it and, you know, Sometimes she be open and she don't let it go, man. Let it fly, T. Lee. You you got that shot. I mean, especially that set corner shot. She knew to do her thing on that, man. And 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 of course, you know, Miss Crump, she's all around, man. She's gonna play defense. She's gonna take you to the hole. You know, um, sometimes she clutch that thing like she want to dunk, Ken. So do. Yeah, so man. She good. Good. Yeah, <laughs> man. So good, good choices right here. So congratulations to them. Um Here's the first team all swag. Uh, Ryan Payne, I uh, uh, definitely earned that. Zay Green, yeah. So, yeah, they, I mean, I think they got the first team all swag right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't have an issue with any of the players that was selected. We get to uh, Ariana Grizzle, um, uh, pretty young lady too, man. She's a nice-looking young lady. She's uh, She plays well, <laughs> man. No, no, what no. Was she she play? She's a guard. But I don't know. This is you say who she reminds me of. Skylar Diggins, bro. Mm. You know how some of, and I don't mean that in in, in a in an attractive way like like I'm like that. I mean it like right. you get like a pretty guard. It's always, uh, you know, well I ain't gonna go too far with that because you you know she she ain't no tomboy looking type joker. She just she don't look like your your average basketball player, but right. she's actually a killer on the court. You know what I'm saying? Baby face assassin. That's what they call it. You know what I mean? So uh, she's a great ball. They they double teamed her all game today. They made it very difficult for her to make shots, as you're supposed to do when you know that's the best player uh, that's on the on the court that they have. So uh, it still was a close game. Um, they If they made their free throws, they probably could have won that game. But I have no problem with the first team all swag. Um, uh, but um, – so, so, Ken, how many teams did we um, did we have in the swag that didn't make it? Valley? It's always four. Always so four? The top eight. Yeah, you take the top eight. Okay. Yeah. Second team. So Karai Beck with UAPB, she's out for the season with Achilles injury. Uh, so she won't be playing in the uh in the tournament. That's gonna hurt uh UAPB. But UAPB is just like Jackson State has three all swag players. Beck Beck being out, uh, uh Maya Pete is gonna be playing Asia Jackson, uh second team, defense player of the year one, second team, all swag. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. Uh I felt like, you know. She could have been on the first team, yeah, but you know, I take second team. Uh, Maya Simmons, uh, Alabama AM, they, they'll be playing tomorrow. So you got UAPB versus Alabama AM, and then you got Destiny Brown, who's actually a baller for Alcorn. So, uh, pretty good second team. I think they got it right. I think they did. Congratulations to all the ladies. Moving right along. Hey, we got the best player in college basketball from a swag standpoint or the men's. Congratulations, Ken Evans Jr. That boy Ken won Player of the Year, man. Uh, no surprise here. Um, was an absolute baller this year. I mean, really, honestly, he could have. I, I still, I still feel like Ken left a lot of meat on the bone this season, and he was, he was doing a lot, had a lot of big games. Um, so yeah, congratulations to Ken, man. We, we definitely uh, uh, proud of him, man. And um, big, big year. Defensive player of the year, Jordan O'Neal. Um, 
big time award here. I, you know, I, I, I can't say uh, that I didn't see it coming, you know what I'm saying? But big time award here, defensive player, swag defense player of the year. That's, that's huge uh, for coach. Mo. So what this tells me is this TD, uh, TD, we have the best offensive and defensive player in the, in the, in the, in the league. We got what we need to go win the tournament, bro. That's my point. That's my point. Um, the regular season is over with. It don't matter. We need Ken Evans to have those Ken Evans type games. Um, you know, big time thirty point games. You got to get to thirty. You got to get over twenty. You can't have nothing less than twenty on the court. And we need Jordan to have a big monster game, rebounding and defensive uh, play on the inside. So, congratulations to both uh, Jordan O'Neal and Ken Evans being player of the year, swag player of the year, and defensive player of the year. But I got a funny, funny, funny thing I mentioned about Jordan as we proceed. Go ahead, TD. Yeah, man. I was gonna say congratulations to both of the uh the young men here. They 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 did have a good year. Uh like you said, Ken did leave some meat on the bone. There were several games where you know he couldn't seem to find the stroke. But you know, one one thing about a shoot, he kept shooting and you know, it wasn't, wasn't a whole bunch of selfish play. You know, at, at times, somebody feel like, hey, maybe, you know, he didn't get the ball when he was open. But look, man, when he got it, he took advantage of it. So uh, congratulations to him uh, for being player of the year. Uh, O'Neal, very much deserving. You know, when, when he was definitely, when he was healthy, he held down the middle. And one thing I, I do like about O'Neal, man, he brought back that little hook shot, Ken. Yeah, the jump hook, yeah. Yeah, the John Hook man, he, he'll block it's you to effective. death, huh? It's effective too. Yeah, yeah, it's effective. When he shoot it, it usually goes in, man. He, he, he when he dunk, he lets you know that he's there. So again, man, uh, congratulations to these players. Like you said, the regular season is is done. Now it's time to go out there and you know step the game up. You know, there's no excuses. You know, no, we, we can't speak on the injuries and stuff. That's been like that all year. Let's go out and do your thing. Now we have Chase back with guard play. Uh, yep. Cornelius, uh, I like you know what? I want to see Cornelius do a little more stroking, man. He 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 can shoot, keep you yep. on, you know. We got to get our guys, you know, uh, 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 really playing, man. And uh, you know, see how far you're running this thing, like you said, you know, with the lineup, we have a chance, we have a chance. Now it's just time to go out and execute, absolutely. Hey, while we're at it, thank you, Maria, for reminding us. Make sure you guys are going to go vote. Vote Infinity. We need to make sure we're voting for the retool of your school. Uh, we it's free money. We just got to keep voting. We got to. Right now we're sitting third, and we got to we way behind. So we got to we got to catch up, man. Keep voting. Vote as many times as you can, and uh, appreciate you for the reminder, uh, Miss Miss Maria. Hey Mo, you're absolutely right. When coaches show up, we win. TD, that's absolutely correct. We need Coachy to make some shots, man. We need Zeke to get in there and play some big time ball. We need them Tigers to ball out this. Hey, man, how bad you want it? It's a swag tournament. We got to go get it. We got the swag offensive player. Of the, we got the swag player of the year. We got an NBA, former NBA champion as a head coach. And we got the defensive player of the year. We got everything we need. We got everything we need, man. And, and then, and let me say this about the injuries. TD, you, your bench gets very short during tournament time anyway. In the playoffs, yeah. Most coaches don't even go that deep in their bench. No, they don't. Eight deep, maybe. Seven, eight deep, maybe. You know, nine is a stretch. You know what I mean? We got enough players to go out there and do what we need to do. And here's the thing, man. Ken, Ken played, what, like 40 minutes, you know, on Saturday? So they, they, they ain't in shape, man. That's right, uh, C. Lee. Two dogs, one bone. We got to go get it, man. We got to go get it. First team all swag, Ken Evans, Jr., Jeremiah Kendall with Alcorn, uh, PJ Henry, Texas Southern, Zion Harmon, uh, Kentavious Dozier. I don't have no problem with these. With these, I mean, these these are all ballers, especially Zion Harmon. Kentavious Dozier was a baller for Gremlin. Jeremiah Kendall, PJ Henry, Ken Evans Jr. I, I, I'm a, I don't have no issues with this with the first team all swag TD. Well, right, but. I do have an issue with the second team. Oh. Somebody explain to me how the defensive player of the year in the swag ain't on the second team all swag. That kid right there, man, this Tijine Diomasi for Southern, 
Ain't no way in the hell he should have made second team all swag. He averaged nine points a game, bro. I don't know what they were looking at. I don't know what they was what what the criteria was. I can't tell you that, but there's no way he should have made all, first a second team all swag. Call me a mm-hmm. hater, whatever you want to call me. I'm just saying, you look at the stats. Uh, the stats don't justify it. Uh, let's say they just wanted to have a Southern player. Nine points a game, bro. And you got the swag defensive player of the game a year that's averaging 12 and 7. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, 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 a, and a mad – I, I don't get it, man. I, I, all the other guys, I mean, Jacoby Hetty, okay, TJ T. Madlock for sure, uh, Colin Milton for sure because he was a shooter. Uh, Rashad Williams, okay, but eh. Alabama and them had another young man that that, that could have possibly been on there. It's a couple of players that could have. Gramlin had another player that could have been on there. It just, I just thought, and I'm not hating on the young man, but I'm just, I just, I don't know what the criteria is if it ain't based off stats. I ain't never seen a single digit, <laughs> a single digit point averager that ain't got the other stats. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's out there that the dictate. But I don't understand how you win defensive player of the year and not even make the all swag team. That's just that's crazy to me. That's just, that's hey, crazy to me. But check this out too, Ken. I'm not sure what the players uh at Valley did in the rest of their game. I know they won in three. Man, Valley got some shooters. They do. I have to look at the stats. Yeah, uh, man. Hey, hey, there you go, Coach. They just wanted somebody from Southern on there. That, that, that's the type of shit we do in the swag that just kind of makes a lot of stuff, make you scratch a hole in your head on a lot of that stuff, man. I, I, I'm sorry. I just can't. I, I can't. I was shocked when I saw that. But I ain't no hater. I'm just telling you. It is what it is, man. I just thought Jordan O'Neal should have definitely been in the second team all swag. Um, it's definitely a case because he's a hey, yeah. he's yeah. all guards, bro. No bigs in this list. None of these are bigs. See, Lee saying the same thing, man. I agree, man. Uh, if those guys, maybe just the Jackson State thing. I didn't see Valley play other than that, man. But you, you would think those, those guys ball. But oh, go ahead. <laughs> That's all I got, bro. I don't know. I don't know, dog. I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I just, uh, you know, that's pretty much what I had, man. As we, as Coach O talked about the. Uh, Let's see, the 26th is they got practice. The 25th is going to be, um, so they got Monday pro day. Then they got practice on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, I'm not sure when the scrimmages will be. Of course, we would, we would, there you go. This is, there you go. Here you go right here, TD. Valley person, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, how do you average 18 points per game and not even make second team, bro? And you can't tell me it's based off wins losses because you gave freaking player of the year in the women's to a woman to a team that won nine games, bro. That Thank you, Blue. Nine in a dub. Come on. I know, I know the I know that boy won't just shoot the lights out again, Jack State. That boy, that boy got he he in Washington. Yeah, Raekwon Brown was <laughs> Woo. that boy killer, man. For real. Yeah. Hopefully he'll be at Jack State next year. Donovan Sanders, they got three. Donovan Sanders, Raycon Brown, and uh, Danny Washington. That was number 10. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. what. Hey, listen, the swag going to swag, man. The swag going to swag. Hey, who down in Birmingham right now? Who down there? Blue, you down in Birmingham? Who's over there, man? Who over there? So the games for tomorrow, let's look at the games for tomorrow one more time. We got tomorrow, uh, we got um, we got Arkansas Pine Bluff women at 530. And we have Alcorn women at 11 a.m. Southern versus Alcorn, 11 a.m. tomorrow. And for the men's side, we got uh, Southern and Bethune-Cookman at 830. And we got Jackson State versus Texas Southern at 2 p.m. Can't wait to tune in and watch that game. Wish I could make it. Can't make it. I'll be – I told you, that, you know, my, my goal is to get there for the championship game, TD. If I can get there for the championship game, I'll uh, I'll make it happen, though, man. But um, we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. 
Good deal. I got to um, make sure I had a, the app completely downloaded so I can uh, check out some of the games, man. And, and I plan to attend definitely uh, for the championship game. So be it, you know, uh, be the girls or girls, in, well, the ladies in the men make it or either or. So just got to get support with that. But we do have some fans down there. We've seen them in the stands, man. So the Tigers are going to represent. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, went today and we'll probably make it Friday. Okay, that's what's up. That's a quick, that's an easy turnaround. Now, I don't know about the late night, but you know, uh, we'll definitely make it happen. I know I'll uh try, I love to get down there. You know, if we get to that championship game, I'm in that thing. In there like swim well. That's for damn sure. I'm definitely coming in there. But at this week, man, is a recharge. We got a lot of uh work to do um that I'm working on. And then like I said, tomorrow we'll get together, bro, and we'll uh I definitely uh, add you guys in the loop on just kind of what fell in our lap today. Yeah, it's an investment. It's a major investment, but I think it's going to pay off in the end. Um, looking at uh, ATD, that's a nice necklace. Bro, I need one of those. We can make it happen for you, bro. I, I look you up on uh, on my one social media. <laughs> hey, TD, TD, out here, TD out here throwing us under the bus, talking about he don't let stuff piss him off. TD ain't on Twitter. I, I've, gotten That's why. I've, gotten a, I've gotten a lot better. I've gotten a lot better now. But I'm telling yeah, you, now, well. boy, you, hey, you, hey, you done yourself a favor not being in them Twitter streets. You hear me? Shoot, man, can I from the old school? I ain't with a lot of woofing, that back and forth, man. At the end of the day, man, what are we gonna do? So you know, I, I mean, I'm gonna have time for all that, man, and, and, and I'm beyond that. So you know, I'm. No, I don't. Not, not a lot of times. I don't really engage. TD is just. I, 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 I've done a really good job of avoiding it, like trying to not see it. But sometimes that that bullshit fall in your lap, man. Every now and again, and you get you get affected by it. But now I've done a lot better. I mean, the main thing is staying busy, though. You know, we we too busy trying to elevate. We ain't got time for that other foolishness, man. It's a lot of work to be done, and uh, I think this is a good time. We're getting ready to close it out, y'all. I thought we had a really good show. Uh, TD, they said TD got folks food. It was KT Dub say. <laughs> hey, hey the devil will always appear at the wrong. Time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <sighs> hey, indeed, uh, hey, Dante, drop your uh, drop me some contact information, though, man. The email address or, or or IG account, something like that, man. I'll reach out to you. Absolutely. Hey, just a real quick shout out, man. We want to shout out to Hattiesburg Management Group for the partnership. We're looking to really take this train to the next level, man. Stay tuned for uh, the latest updates, uh, what we got coming. As I stated, we, uh, we're rebranding. Um, I'm necessarily rebranding, but more so expanding and, and elevating the brand. Um, uh, we, we, we're going to rebrand the website and actually make it a little bit more interactive. Uh, we're going to build our our collaborative NIL uh, partners, uh, members, memberships, all that good stuff. We we're able to um, partner in a major way. One of the things we're looking at doing, CD, is um, like what's in it for the for those that that are actively investing in what we got going on. We're looking to try to partner with companies that's going to provide perks, so that those that are member partners with us, you know, will be afforded all of those. Uh, those perks, man. We're also looking to have a, a major NIL collective, uh, spun of, uh, just an NIL fundraiser event, man. Just an informative meetup and uh, event very soon. To uh, information to be coming very soon. It will be in Jackson, um, and uh, just just more information uh, forthcoming. It's gonna be a game changer. Looking to bring uh, businesses out, all that good stuff, man. So I'm 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 speeding through it because I don't have the infrastructure completely in detail to try to share it, but just stay tuned, man. That's all I got, big dog. Anything else you got? You've done a great job, man. No, sir. No, sir. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate Tiger Nation. Appreciate you providing your undivided attention. So thank you. What is he talking about? That's what you're talking about. You're talking about what, he, what, we, what I just said. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all gotta leave them little personal calls alone. They, they, this, this, this brother stuff, man. Y'all know how we get down, man. Family, family always get on each other's nerves, man. But now nah, it's all fun. It's all love, all good, man. So, 
Appreciate everybody, man. Hey, listen, if you want to donate to the channel, make sure y'all hit the like button. If 450 people still watching, hit the like button. You know what I'm saying? Look at that ticker at the bottom. If you'd like to donate to the platform, leave a donation. Feel free to hit that cash app. Quickest way to donate, King Clark 1400. Uh, go straight to the platform. So, you know, we use those all those resources for the, the platform to continue to grow what we're doing. And uh, we appreciate the support. Hey, you know, last, so, hey, hey, last thing I would say, bro. Go ahead. Last thing I would say, uh, again, Tiger Nation, you know, can explain to you everything that we're trying to do on the platform. You know, we're trying to do, you know, uh, with the player non-football related and everything else. You know, you see within your heart, you know, support. You know what I'm saying? We, we say D.I. Love, we say Tiger Nation, but, you know, we can't constantly complain about what someone is not doing for us. We got to do what we can for ourselves. And, and trust me, I, I have a lot of personal stuff going on. So, hey, it's not every time I can, but I do when I can, you know, just for the support, man, the effort, man, to show love to the, you know, the I love. Continue to watch the game, continue to support the players. You have to go out to a baseball game, soccer game, whatever's going on. You know what I'm saying? Let's support all sports, JSU, and, you know, academics as well. I get those yeah. letters in the mail, man. I get those letters in the mail. So I support there as well. Facts. I, I'll say this and then I'll close it out. Um, all we're really trying to do, TD, is that when we go, when we sat down and we really took a real snapshot of everything that we did over the past year and a half, dog, it's mind blowing, bro. It's mind blowing. Like, I'm so serious. I don't think people really fully grasp everything that we were able to accomplish through this platform, through the support of the Dome. We did a lot, man. And I'm telling you, like, to try to take that that we've done for JSU, for athletics, for students, athlete, at whatever, and convey that to someone, it is mind boggling. And um, the reality of the matter is, is that if anybody could do it one time. It's like luck. But how do you take that model, expand on it, and put something in place consistently? You follow what I'm saying? This is not, it's, we, we're talking about building an ecosystem a real community of resources that's centered around assisting and advancing JSU in various different aspects. The JSU community, we're connecting the dots, man. It's, it's, it's collaboration. You can have your own little small rosewood that exists right within our own community TD and it's all geared towards the beneficial of the one thing that we all love and that's JSU. You know, not saying that others aren't doing things. It, it, what we're doing, TD, ain't even going, we ain't even, we ain't even in that lane. We're in a whole different, we're on a whole different highway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You driving 75, going down 55, we on I-20 over here, man. We, we in a whole different lane. And, and, and the reality of the matter is you can do multiple things at the same time, all for the same benefit in various different aspects. So we talk about, the JSU community, we're not talking about the building, bro. We're not talking about just the actual land structure. We're talking about the community and how we can collaborate collectively in a way that's extremely effective and is repetitious and it don't stop. You build an infrastructure and it's, 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 it's it, 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 that's why you, that's when you start getting to that level with it. So, just telling you, man. I leave it there. It's, it's it's crazy when you sit down to it. That's when you bring the real, the big guns in, the professionals in, and one relationship lead to another relationship, and, and then you start scaling. And I'll just say this, and I'll be done. The firm that we work with, TD, work with a lot of uh, schools and, and and entities that don't that don't look like what we look like. You know what I'm saying? So when we get in a game like that, now we're looking to just try to, you know, elevate what we're doing, and we're gonna need the support of those that, that that support us and love what we're doing and trust me we'll get back into the initiative game but we're going to do it a lot more strategic because it'll be more sustainable so 
uh, I, I, we, there's more to come with that, and 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 we're gonna put we're gonna run all this through our site, and everything that we're talking about to be available. We're gonna we're gonna create a one stop shop. So when we get on the site, TD, we can drop that information, and they can run right to the site. They can see everything we're talking about, how to join, how to donate, our our brand athletes. You know what I'm saying? Like interviews, the channel, memberships, our sponsors. You feel, you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a, it's crazy, man. I'm 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 pretty pumped up about it. God is good, and and you know He said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables, man. So that when they read it, everyone may be able to read it fluently. That's what He said. He give you the vision. You just got to roll with it. So we just vessels. We just vessels, man. We love it. It's all centered around love. Ain't no competition over here. We just we gonna do what we do. We gonna stay in our lane, and we are gonna drive the speed limit, so it ain't gonna be no traffic. Shout out to uh, TCI Kid over there, H Town, the comedian. But that's all I got, man. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, yes, I will see y'all back on Friday, fun day Friday, and uh, I'll hit you up tomorrow, bro. We we'll wrap. Uh, appreciate everybody, man. Uh, Di love, go Tigers, baby. Go Tigers. <laughs>